You're on the Virtual Entertainment Programming Network. TVEPN.com. Mike, it'll do that one more time, the whole E40 thing. Ooh, you can pretty much tell when you was a boss when you got couples of bottles of Louis the 13th laying around the house. I'm as sharp as they come. I'm cut like a machete. You know where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> That's off of uh, California G's with Yuck Mouth, E40, Messy, no, not Messy Marv. Uh, I think it's San Quinn. Mm-hmm. Awesome, dude. I didn't awesome. know what you were saying, but I just laughed. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Oh thank my you, goodness! Thank you, thank you. I wanted to start off the show on that sort of tip, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition <laughs> of the Slam Show for September eighth, two thousand and fourteen. I'm the main man, Slam and Sam, and we're gonna take it right from the back on the way up with introductions. <laughs> uh, Joe Corzo with Joe Time Entertainment. Hello, Michael Smooth in the building. Michael Smooth Mondays. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's Monday, Michael Smoothway. I like it. Go, cool, go. Cool. Cindy here, and I don't take it up the back. Oh, <laughs> oh hello. Wow, how could I top that? I'm the lovely Lady Sage. Cool, cool. Benny Mac. Benny Mac in the house. And Cecilia French. All right, our special <laughs> guest, certified massage therapist yeah. in the slam show welcome everyone we're excited for the show you didn't have to do that benny mac giving that to your significant other gotta studio, hand it to studio her. audience studio audience carla in the house yeah. Yeah, carla. <laughs> see she gets a round of applause none of you guys deserve <laughs> any useless girl useless <laughs> so as we always do uh we have to go into our past week or weekend half so once again uh this is the Slam Show. Thank you for joining us. I know you guys are kind of like pulling back from watching Monday Night Football, but this is way better. Way better. I guarantee you that, especially this episode we have tonight. All right, let's work our way around. Joe Time, how was your past week and weekend? Tell us about it. Uh, my weekend was pretty cool, man. You know, Niners got the victory on, on the road, man. I got to see the uh, Niners Empire take over Dallas, man. That was crazy. That's pretty awesome. Uh, not only that, I got to hang out with my fam, man. Uh, got another nephew on the way. A little uh, shout out to little Tristan. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Stick that hand out. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I uh, had a nice little week off and, uh, you know, just continuing my uh, my training. Even though flight football is over, I'm still hitting that field, man. It's fun. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I get like some, it. Get some of the guys together. Uh, yeah, some we'll tackling over. My, nah, we'll tackle. tackle. Man. <laughs> I need a concussion for him. <laughs> I ain't going out for the NFL. Oh. But uh, yeah, no, just uh, really just staying conditioned, man. I feel good doing it. Uh, and all of that, I hit a couple mics up this weekend, so that's pretty cool. And I had like a whole week off from work, um, you know, so just yeah. kind of like reassessing my situation because I got a few um, venues that will be producing uh joe time comedy yet so mm. stay tuned for that so i'm gonna be hitting a few other cities so it's gonna be really cool man cool, so cool. the takeover is real there you go there you go yeah you it's know. always good to kind of have a little break from the hectic schedule that you have man yeah because you're always grinding every single day every day every way you got to recalibrate sooner or later. <laughs> and well, I got to hit with Cecilia see what I can get. I was about to say, get a massage. Get a massage. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Not through the back, though. Not through oh, the back. <laughs> Mike Hill. That's extra. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> but before I get into my, my weekend, I have a gift for Lady Sage. Oh, <gasps> what the heck? You're standing up, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I have a... And he's bending over. Is it donuts? <laughs> Sage, I, I felt your disappointment. Oh. <laughs> Disappointment last week when you asked if I had these and I did not. Ooh. So your very own bag of sour lovers. I'll share. Thank sour you. Lovers. Just for you. Because she—that's the first you. thing she says to me when she comes out, uh, uh, you know, of a room. I'm she always gets donuts. ready in her outfit. She goes, she goes. So you got the candies? And I was like, 
oh man, I left him at my auntie's condo, and she's like, well, that sucks. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> that sucks. You're not welcome here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly. Sh- you're not welcome here anymore. So can, um, can we put this up to the camera real quick? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's get those up to the camera. Uh, if you don't know, now you know. We had these two weeks ago before the show. I I, I introduced those to the crew here. Mm-hmm. At the Slam Show, they're the best sour candies known to man. Twelve pretty different good. flavors, one bag, is locally. Do it one more time, Cindy. Is it organic? It's pretty much close to organic. It's uh, <laughs> anything. I mean, it's a one hundred percent real fruit juice, no artificial flavoring. Uh, it's tree nut free, soy free, egg free, shellfish free. Uh, shellfish free. Yeah. <laughs> free free. Ev- everything free free, high in antioxidant vitamin C's, mm-hmm. made locally in uh, South City. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm about it, about it. Yeah, no, it's, it's the best. Awesome. They, they really, they, delicious you too. will fall in love. But uh, as far as the week, I mean, uh, got to got to experience new Madden right after show with uh, Slam and Sam. Got to broadcast a game between him and uh, and Alan Ramos. That was awesome. And then, <laughs> the truth was loving it. Who won right? that game? Uh, well, actually, Sl- Slam came back to win. Right, you came back to beat Alan Ramos. I yeah. did. I did. Yeah, it was it was a very close game. Slam uh, finished him off with the field goal at the end. And, uh, Played real football. Yeah, it was it was real football. Truth was kind of like supposed to be my color guy, but was kind of silent. <laughs> 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 I think he was just so enamored in the whole thing. He was, oh man, we gotta do this live. We gotta we gotta make videos and put him on live. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And then uh, and then I got to play Sam, and I got him on the first game, and then. And then he, he's like, no, nah, we need to have a rematch. And then, <laughs> and then I just got out of my game, tried to go too much for the deep ball, and it was. It I won. Dark, yeah, it I was, won the it run was, back. Uh, it was almost mercy rule status. But then uh, as far as the weekend, the weekend was great, man. I had I pretty much had three days off because my, my Thursday, I worked a 7.30 at night into a 4.30 in the morning Ooh. at my wow. job. Yeah, it was all right, though, man. The pumps were kind of down, so it gave me a lot of time to just, you know, get everything done. Uh, went to bed at around 6 in the morning. And uh, Benny, he's talking about penis pumps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <I'm> t- <laughs> I assumed Sorry. already. Man, yeah. I'm not what even else shocked. would you assume? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? Until yeah. we get the penis mics. And then, yeah. <laughs> then we're in good shape. There we go. And, uh, and then uh, I, I had I finally got my cavities filled, which is awesome. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thank That's you, thank something you. you've been talking the yeah. past three shows. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and Guess then, the penis pump worked. <laughs> and I'll be, getting, them I'll, be getting a, I'll be getting a mouth guard pretty soon at night so that I don't grind my teeth. And they say it's going to have better sleep. So I'm like, all right. It's cool. Um, I got to broadcast for my alma mater, uh, a Liberty game against Chico. That's and right. And they crushed them at 35-14. Awesome. They wore these new jerseys. They were gold jerseys uh, with cardinal numbers outlined in white. It said Pride Matters on the back. And it's just really cool. That the coach there, Ken Walters, he's in his second year. And you could tell that he's really starting to build kind of a tradition. Like uh, when they were getting ready to come out, uh, they were kind of huddled up and swaying back and forth till I, to, uh, till I collapsed by Eminem. Mm-hmm. And then the fans and the band in the stands were, were like swaying. swaying back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. And then um, it, it was just, it was just uh, you could tell like Liberty's on the rise. They're sports program. So it's awesome to see that, uh, especially in the tough BBL with Pitt and Deer Valley, Antioch and Likes, Freedom. Um, and then after that, went out, uh, had some drinks, went to Uptown for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, saw some people that I saw last time I was there with you, so that was pretty cool. Cool, cool. Then uh, woke up Saturday morning, went to the Cal home opener, and they crushed my, my alma mater, Sac State, as far as my college alma mater. And uh, it was it was awesome. 55-14, took my best friend. He'd never been to a Cal game before, and he was just loving the whole atmosphere. He was just like, man, this is bad, though. There's too many hot girls that are, like, really young here. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we're all, you know, we're four years graduating from college, so it's us. The college wow. girls are kind of young these days, but... Uh, but uh, did that. Then we went to. Uh, I, it was weird, man. I had a, I had a fantasy football draft that I was trying to do on the phone while walking down the hill from Bart. What? While trying to have a drink with these girls that I knew from Sac State. While then <laughs> having to leave because I had to get to an engagement party back in Brentwood. The engagement party was four to eight. We showed up at like seven fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Filipino time, and you're not even Filipino. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was all good, and then. Um, and then I challenged my best friend, uh, Bust a Move, at my house afterwards. If, for those of you that don't know, it's like, if you, maybe you've heard of Puzzle Bobble. It was a really popular, like, arcade game when we were little where you have to shoot, like, oh, these matching yeah, colored yeah, balls. Like snood. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's, like, really addicting. Um, <laughs> and then after that, <laughs> then after that uh, woke up in the morning and put it on the red zone and watched that until the Niner game. And then watched the Niner game, was very happy with the result. And the um, rest is history. Rest history. Watch a Giants game. Unfortunately, they didn't win the game last night, but they won the series. That you know, Benny Mac's going to talk about it. But uh, 
they're, they're playing great ball right now. Uh, so, you know, getting hot at the right time. This is a time where you want to get hot if you're a Giants fan. So that's why I kind of have the Niner hat, giant shirt, Niner and giant <laughs> socks. I figured, why not, you know, show both teams some love, being that they uh, they balled out over the weekend. And, yeah, it was a, it was a great weekend. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Good job. Cindy, welcome back. You had a Thank little you. Thank vacation. You. Um, yeah, I tried to cram in as much uh, activity as I could in one <laughs> overnight in Reno. Um, I went up there. I, I made a stop at Cabela's, which, if you're not familiar, is like all outdoorsy America redneck store with everything you could think of from guns to, sm to like... Uh, meat drying, meat smoking stuff, and pet stuff, and camping stuff. But anyways, I go there, look around at guns for a while. Um, then I get to, you know, downtown Reno, stay out till about 4, 4.30 in the casinos, <laughs> and uh, and walking up and down, because there's so much to see out there. There's, there's so many uh, characters. Huh. And, characters uh, is the word. Yeah. And classy establishments to... <laughs> to <laughs> To pay to be a patron of, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> did you make any purchases at Cabela's like a, like a bow gun or something? Um, you know, we just bought some rounds because um, we did go shooting on Sunday. Um, there's pictures of that on my Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, you um, got to make that as your cover photo where you're sh holding the AK or something like that on the, the side the, view. That looked pretty awesome. Yeah. 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 Little rifle. Um, yeah, I saw that. Picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, there you go, Benny uh, Mac. Bam. There you go. Creep on the page. Go on. Uh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the cool thing was. Um, we're friends. Yeah, come on. Yeah, Friend, exactly. Facebook friends. Not in front of the audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, the cool minute. thing about um, all the games that were going on this weekend was, you know, you're in Reno. That's a, it's a gambling town. Um, I get to the bar at the El Dorado, and there's a different game on every screen, right? And the funny thing was seeing, like, you know, something would happen, and then somebody across the room would be like, oh, shit! And then, like, five seconds later, something else would happen, and someone would be like, yeah, fuck yeah, man! And then, like, some guys got in a fight, and then, uh, you know, like, as soon as the East Coast games all kind of started to trickle down, you just see all, like, the red start trickling in in the room getting more and more red with all the Niner fans coming to watch the game which I thought that was really cool because it's like alright everybody these games don't matter step aside yeah you let know? the real fans show up mm -hmm. <laughs> which I, I thought y'all would get a kick out of that it's just like slowly this like red the red <laughs> sea yeah, yeah. Yeah. Red. sounds like Dallas in. Stadium yeah it was exactly like Dallas Stadium yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe I actually have never seen a game in Dallas where so much of the other team. I mean, you could tell on TV. This is all read it out. Everybody yeah, looked. which is fantastic. ironic because they have such a huge fan base. Well, I, I think it's just a nice destination to go to. You know, I mean, it's like sometimes me and my friends will get together and go check out a stadium or something. And why wouldn't you want to go to Dallas? Except for our new stadium, it's the second best one on earth probably so. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, they, it's they, worth they, the trip. I think a uh, sports bureau said today that like stats over the last three or five years have shown that. The Niners have been the best road fans, and then Dallas is usually the best home fans. But, I mean, we kind of Took shut Took them out. out. Yeah. Yeah. I heard it was cheaper to uh, go to the gang, fly out of the game, than to pay for uh, the Levi Stadium. <laughs> 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 it probably was. <laughs> I mean, you've seen it with the Giant fans of late. I mean, their road trips are always. They travel so good. Yeah. yeah they so. travel so tough. Well, let's put the brakes on that for now, and let's go to Lady Sage real quick. I'm like, what the fuck, man? It's my turn. <laughs> See, now I forgot what I did. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, it's pretty much a blur. I think I got drunk Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so don't ask me about Friday. Was it so the Moscato? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it had to be the peach or the coconut, right? Something. And I had a back-to-back -back photo shoot on Saturday and watched a game on Sunday. So, yeah, Saturday is pretty much just... You know, working on my project for the Comic Cons, and if you like, check out my Instagram and Facebook. I, I, you know, posted the behind the scenes. So, yeah, Darth Vader rules. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Can't beat that. Cool, Benny Mac. Welcome back onto the program. Thanks for having me, Sam. Huh? I, I know you're nice excited. I am uh, incredibly excited. Let, let's it's the perfect time for me to be here right now. Oh, I'm perfect. stoked. Between football, baseball, mm -hmm. hanging out with all of you guys, mm -hmm. fantastic. And that's why I had to have you on. <laughs> well, I'm glad, it, it was I'm glad a must. you could squeeze me in. My weekend pretty much was all about Sunday. You know, Friday nights and Saturday nights I, I'm working. So uh, okay. my, my weekend starts on Sunday. But okay. woke up, flipped on the, the Red Zone channel. I don't even watch morning football games anymore. Nope. Uh, unless uh, unless the Niners are playing. Which they I, hardly I, play at 10 a.m. now. I just now. watch the Red Zone channel. It is fantastic. Yeah. It's Scott Hansen does a great yeah. job. Uh, he's perfect. Yeah. He's perfect. So I watched that. Um, 
We went down, watched the Niner game at a local establishment, mm -hmm. had a little breakfast, watched the game. I uh, got off to such a great start that I just kind of kept it rolling after that. Went to a couple other local establishments. Uh, maybe even a couple other. <laughs> um, was it quite an ex uh, intoxicating experience? It was a. It was a highly intoxicating. <laughs> I could see through the blur. Uh, yeah, uh, but really fun and very safe, sorta. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, just the 49er game got off to such a great start that I just kind of rode that out the whole rest of the day. That's cool. You know, and then I came here. Like when the 49ers play well, nothing matters. Exactly. Like, I don't care that I'm missing the Monday night games tonight in my fantasy. <laughs> my fantasy football is doing all right. But uh, when the Niners play bad, my whole week is, week is wrecked. <laughs> I can't Aww. even watch TV. That's I can't watch true, ESPN. Though. I can't watch well, anything. You know, my dad I, I and I, we usually say Cal's kind of the predictor for us. If Cal, like, really gets bad and they lose their game on Saturday, then we always kind of fear Sunday, you know. Are the Niners going to kind of play the same? Or, you know, what's going to go on with the Giants? You know, it's yeah. kind of crazy how, you know. Let's have positive thinking, guys. Yeah, right. yeah, Enough yeah. of this pessimistic view. Yeah. Always maintain positivity. Yeah. That's right. There you go. Right on. Well, we're glad to have you here, Benny. Thank you, brother. Can't wait to hear all your incredible insights. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Cecilia. What's Hello. up, girl? Oh, you not are, much. You are finally on the program. I am. After months of preparation. Yeah. <laughs> and convincing. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it was just more like, hey, just be yourself. And just have a ball. There's, a, It's a very stress-free environment. Yeah. Everyone here agrees. It is. Everyone's so chill here, and I'm happy that I came. There. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> How was your weekend? Um, My weekend is usually not as exciting as everyone else's. We'll just make up something then. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say the most exciting part about my weekend was working on a couple of clients on Saturday. Ooh. And then... Um, yeah, I enjoy my work, so it makes me happy to do that. Um, and then also just spending time with my daughter. Yeah, we had like a picnic outside and oh, ran, cool. ran around and got crazy. So, yeah. Did the family thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. I try to do that as much as I can, especially now when she's young. They grow oh, yeah. fast. Yeah, and then they grow up to hate you. And <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah. Positive <laughs> thinking. Yeah. Positive yeah. Thinking. I just said that. Actually, it's, it's true, hell. though. I was it's the, true, though. I was at the store today, and this little girl was like, I hate you, Mommy. You're the worst mommy See? in the world. And I'm like, why? I'm buying you stuff. And I wanted, I wanted to, like, look at, I wanted to grab the kid and yeah. smack her because how dare you say that to your yeah. mom? But that would be child abuse, yeah. so... <laughs> Well, it's not off. your child, so not really. <laughs> it was horrible. I'm like, am I really hearing this not shit? Really. Yeah. 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 Kid, yeah. These days, kids are really disrespectful mm -hmm. to their parents. Oh, my goodness. It's horrible. <laughs> you turned around too fast. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oops, <laughs> well, there you go. Hey, uh, it was uneventful, but hey, yeah. you had a good time, and that's all that matters. Right. Well, it was ev eventful in my own way. Of course. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Maintain positivity. Exactly. That's for sure. All right. As far as my past week, uh, I had a poker tourney over at Cash Creek, which my friends Clockwork and Drew Dirty uh, from BTME uh, accompanied me. And guess what? I didn't do too bad or too well, but Clockwork ended up getting fourth place. Ooh. Ooh. In the money. And I believe he cashed out at 400 plus. So, yeah, not bad. Let's just say How many 500. People? How many people in the tournament? 71. 71. He plays right 40. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was a disappointing 37. <laughs> but, wow. hey, yeah, got to try again. <laughs> because <laughs> poker <laughs> tourneys, uh, we were talking about that prior, Joe Time, in terms of uh, your your past experience and so forth, and you were sharing some knowledge with me. Yes, he is a poker player. He's just trying <laughs> to keep it on the under. And it's... If you don't get the cards, you don't get the cards, regardless. And in, in tourneys, it's even more tough because you have to make sure that you're winning early on so that way your stack gets big and the blinds don't just eat you up. Mm -hmm. And that's the case with me. I was just at a point where I had to go all in, and I didn't really have to, but, hey, I was going to lose it through the blinds anyways. Yeah, build momentum. Exactly. And did you at least wear, like, some cool shades or something to, like, try to block, like, your, you know, to have, like, that? Fuck no, dude. I'm just, like, <laughs> open glasses, uh, open eyes and everything. No no need to, to do any of I that. I mean, were there, was there anyone there, though, that was, like, kind of rocking the shades or, like, some kind of crazy outfit and trying to psych? Because don't they, no psych, they try to psych people out in, in that sport, like, a lot, like, when I watch it on TV? You don't, do you know how to play poker? Uh, I played Texas Hold'em a time or two in my We should time, get him you know? on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you're talking about a very subtle tournament. This isn't World Series of Pro- Poker yeah. where you're having the glasses and yeah. freaking all kinds of uh, trivial stuff going around. It's just everyone having a good time. Yeah. So that was on Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. I was over at my residence at Lift Lounge in Walnut Creek. And obviously Sage had her shoot uh, uh, on Saturday as well. So, yeah, that was that was pretty much that. And, of course, the NFL weekend. We'll talk about that on our next segment. All right, uh, let's go ahead and have a quick recap from last week's guest, choreographer, pro dancer, Alan Ramos. And he was pretty cool. Uh, We had good conversations uh, in terms of what was his purpose in terms of what he wants to do with his whole career, his dance crew, and so forth. And his buddies, quite frankly, they were cool, too, uh, and I was kind of suspect, oh, he's bringing these guys over to hang out and what have you, but they ended up being really good young kids, and as far as Alan is concerned, I really wish the best for his career. He has a good agent that's booking him out of state, having these incredible gigs, much props to him. Uh, Joe Time, what do yes, you think sir. of Mr. Ramos? Ah, he's all right. No, I'm just kidding. Alan, you're, you're amazing, bro. Uh, Alan Ramos is an awesome dude, man. Uh, he has a really good head on his shoulders. He really knows exactly what he wants. Uh, he's definitely developing a great uh, talent in dance, and it, it shows in his movement. When and, he, you know, and his video and too. His video as well, and he has a <clears throat> great agent who, or management that's getting him out of gigs outside of the state. And not only that, he just got booked another gig to London. So that's something that his dream and really just focus on what he wants and has taken him to, you know, places he's never been before. So that's something that I always look forward to, especially in the business and the industry and the field that I'm in, Mm -hmm. uh, especially just doing something you love and it helps you, uh, you know, experience things that you never thought possible. So, you know, stick to what you want. Follow your dream. Follow your excitement. Uh, Not only that, uh, the things he's doing with the kids, he's uh, hosting about or teaching five different studios, I believe, that have kids that are you know don't really have a place to go really don't have a nice living style i'm not really sure i can't really judge what the thing is but i know he's doing a lot with uh, choreographing for them and working for the city Mm -hmm. of uh, san joaquin so if you're in san joaquin area look them up alan ramos and see what they got going for you guys so you guys can do that and i think they're doing a trip doing a red carpet event and they're still looking for sponsors i believe for that event so uh you know go out there and uh, show some support. I mean, I think it's like 250 a kid, but uh, you know, 250 dollars you pay a ticket like that, and it doesn't go to nowhere. So yeah, you know, do something good for your life. Uh, not only that, uh, just him and the individuals that he bring with him, and having the truth on here as well. We got the funny cats, <laughs> uh, really entertaining, and uh, yeah, man, have a stallion on the uh, other side. But it's good to have you back, Cindy. But everything was great that show. That's right. That's there you go. Good insights, Mike Hill. And uh, there's a lot to be said about last week's show. Uh, we'll start with the main guest and Ramos and. Uh, yeah, he's doing work in Stockton, and, and I've worked out there. You know, I know how kind of a downtrodden city it is, you know, a city that went bankrupt, and, and the people out there really kind of living on hard times. And so for him to step up and out of his own money, trying to, in his own time, uh, make the time to, to show these kids, you know, give them something special to look forward to and want to take them to L.A. and give them the red carpet experience and, and teach them to want it. I mean, they, they love dancing out there. And um, and he's and he's he loves dancing. And so when you have kids that love dancing, he loves dancing. You know, it's going to be something good. Just the way he answered his questions too on the uh, volunteer questions of death. I, I thought he answered. <laughs> I thought he. I thought he questions answered them all uh, really good. I mean, like like it was kind of a surpriser when he said Bernie Mac is the celebrity that, that you know because we were all thinking Michael Jackson. I think we yeah all because of his dancing. With his dance moves. Um, and then you know just like who he says he looks up to and. You know, there was really no shortage of that list when it comes to Chris Brown and Usher and, mm-hmm, and Omarion, mm-hmm. you know, and how he said he would love to see, like, a battle between those three guys. Uh, he was just a really good dude, like Joe Time said, uh, great head on his shoulders. Uh, you could tell he was confident in his abilities, uh, noting his YouTube status, but he wasn't cocky. And, um, and, and I just, I really hope that he achieves all he can and i'd love to see him as that next great choreographer in in the hip-hop game or r&b or whatever he ends up going towards uh the kid has a a great bright future ahead of him yes and uh and like you said getting booked on these gigs is only going to help his exposure um and then of course the the guests that were here i mean truth was awesome you know me you saw me and him we really bonded that was your bromance yeah that was a bromance budding i love that guy uh, (laughs) i love that guy he was awesome uh truth is great and and Stallion just capping on truth the whole night for the 7-Eleven pizza decision. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that joke never died. Can you died. believe that? Yeah. Benny Mac, Cecilia, he brought 
well, pizza no, from Seven well, Eleven. Well, Slam and Sam, you know, he said, what? he said, he said, he said, bring bring food for the show, and I, he just found it with them to bring pizza from Seven Eleven. He <laughs> felt that that was going to be a smooth move. Kind of like that. Not hey, even like, I didn't even know they had pizza yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. No exactly. one knew. No one knew that they had at pizza. Least, at least he didn't bring those roller wieners. Well, see here. <laughs> well, see here's here's the what, here's dog. the worst part about it is he. I guess he kind of promised that he was bringing Little Caesars at first. Yes. Oh. And then brought Seven Eleven pizza. <laughs> And they weren't the same. (laughs) (laughs) Same shit, different toys. Yeah, and uh, it was just funny because Stallion wasn't letting that one go. And you could tell Stallion, I mean, it was my first time meeting him, but I could could see why he was, you know, well-liked on the show and why he had a lot of followers. And uh, he seems like he's just really, really funny, Um, you know, kind of has that sarcastic nature to him. But, um, you know, we didn't really get to talk to him too much, but just his points on things he, I could tell he's a good dude and, and you know what his, his boys as far as Ramos's boys are concerned hey they're just like him you know they want a shot I mean they were so appreciative to even be a part of the show I mean it was awesome like the way that they were you know giving me the hug and a high five afterwards like man thank you for letting me <laughs> be a part of this hug? <laughs> yeah I was, like, I was like hey it's not my show you know but like yeah man like you know you guys you, you're, you're trying to be a photographer and I forgot what the other he was trying to do but yeah, yeah photographer and there was another guy yeah yeah and you know heck they're tr- they got to get their start somewhere i knew how it was when i first started in the broadcasting mm-hmm. career gotta have you a know, break try, yeah try to get that break anywhere you can so for those guys they they probably felt like you know they were you know living the high life and <laughs> I mean, I feel like that every week on this show, so I could see where they're coming from, and it was just good to uh, get to meet those guys and see uh, how passionate and happy they were about what they're doing, and, mm-hmm. and especially being on the show. You know, it's a privilege to be on the Slam show, so it was it was cool that they looked at it in that light too. Awesome insights there, Sage. You're gonna have to top that. Holy shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I totally agree with what they said about um, Alan. I mean, he is a very humble kid, and. In the terms now, hungry. Yes. Right? Yeah. And Not home. Yeah, you gotta be hungry. Yeah. yeah you stay hungry. Hungry. Yeah, I, I had to get a definition. Especially with that Seven Eleven pizza. No one really <laughs> that I had to get the correct definition of Seven Eleven. Yeah. Seven Eleven pizza. Everybody stay hey, hungry. But, <laughs> hey, but you know what? On the real, at least you know, truth brought food. So yeah. You know, yeah. Truth. Don't listen to these guys. I mean. You're awesome. And he's a hardcore Lions fan. How many of those do you really see out there in the world? Zero. Oh. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Not in this neck of the woods. I know you guys are having your bromance right now, but yeah. <laughs> I, I can't top what they said. I mean, just it's just fantastic so, how we had a group of people that even Stallion was here. By the way, I hope you wipe your chair because you have Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Too late. Yeah. Too late. Just like oh, man. crew style dancing? Like battle style? Is that? Both. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Michael Jackson choreography. He does and, it all, man. Yeah, yeah that's but awesome. let me all clo- the above. Let me close it out. I just, I do hope to see him in like one of those like America's Got Talent or, you know, those uh, network shows that he would you know participate in and hopefully win. Of win course, something. And yeah. that's what I hope for the guy. Yeah, remember video. he said he he said he got beat out by some joke and it's just like and that kind of frustrates me. You know, like like you know, I know America landed the free and stuff, but. You know, don't, don't just give some guy a joke a chance just because you know he's going to give you ratings as far as the laughter is concerned. You know, like really, you know, pick the people that deserve to be there because I'm sure that guy took a spot from Ramos who really could have deserved it, you know. Mm. And, and that's that's when I was frustrated. Like, not I wasn't frustrated at Ramos. I was frustrated at the fact that he did go out for one of those shows mm-hmm. and that he didn't get picked. And so and he and he knew. Remember, he told us he said some guy that was way worse than him got picked over him. And just sad when that kind of when that kind of thing happens. Yeah, you know? that's how you learn, though. You yeah, I mean? yeah, it's like, right. It, it can't come easy, right? You got to have some some trials and sure, tribulations sure. to work through. He's going to be way better for it. Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean? definitely. For some reason, he wasn't ready. So yep. when he comes back, he's you're right. Gonna rock you're right. It, you know, and I don't everything know happens kid, for a reason. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And to watch that episode as well as other replays of the Slam Show, go to theslamshow.com or theslamshow.tv. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break and be back with the sports and news topics. And we got quite a bit to talk about. So everyone, hang tight here on the Slam Show. <laughs> Call 1-800-CAR-TITLE to borrow $2,500 to $50,000 against the value of your vehicle. 1-800-CAR-TITLE has been offering the lowest rates and monthly payments for over 10 years. Mention promo code FREEWAY to receive free gas with your loan. 1-800-227-8485. 1-800-CAR-TITLE, a proud supporter of the Freeway Series. 1-800-CAR-TITLE, fast cash and low payments every day. 
It's hurricane and wildfire season again. Why do thousands of people sit in these reoccurring problem areas year after year, betting their lives that the disaster won't get them? Hundreds of you helped eFoods Direct ship 50,000 donated meals to the Oklahoma victims. The problem is we can't help everybody. If every one of us who can will take care of ourselves, we can all pitch in to take care of those who really can't. The new just-in-case pack from eFoods Direct is the big brother to the seven-day emergency pack designed for Oklahoma disaster donations. It contains a two-month supply for one person, or a one-month supply for two adults, or a two-week supply for a family of four. The $320 price is $50 less than retail. Call 800-409-5633 on the web eFoodsDirect.com slash Alex. Order two or more, get 10% off, free shipping applies. Call 800-409-5633 on the web, eFoodsDirect.com slash Alex. Protecting your home with a security system is a must. But when it comes to protecting your family, your home, and belongings, there's no need to sign a long-term contract. Listen, there is some real scum in the alarm business cashing in by locking you into long, punishing contracts. Not with Simply Safe Home Security. They're the good guys. You can trust Simply Safe to protect your family. Simply Safe was created by a Harvard Business School engineer, and it's revolutionary. You'll get 24-hour protection for just $14.99 a month. There are no hidden fees and no contracts. You'll save thousands. Plus, you're protected by their 100% money-back guarantee. Protect yourself against home invasions and break-ins. Order your Simply Safe system now and receive a wireless keychain remote, a $25 gift, free. So don't waste your time dealing with scum. Visit GetSimplySafe.com. 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 Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope, it's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. You know the U.S. dollar is devaluing. You can see it happening every day. You know a new currency will take over at some point. Wouldn't you like to be in on the ground floor? Bitcoins. They're a decentralized, anonymous internet currency. They're free to use, free to accept, and free from inflation forever. You can use them anywhere in the world, and their value seems only to be increasing. Find out more at weusecoins.org. Don't be kicking yourself in the pants in a month. Your dollars are going down. Bitcoins are going up. Weusecoins.org. <laughs> Snoring, it's not just something to laugh about. Snoring could be a symptom of sleep apnea, a serious condition where breathing stops during sleep. And if left untreated, can lead to daytime drowsiness while driving, high blood pressure, acid reflux, heart attack, and stroke. Plus, the family issues of the snoring keeping others up all night. The first step in treatment is a sleep study. Through HomeApneaTest.com, it can now be done in your own home in the comfort of your own bed through the direction of a board-certified sleep medicine physician in your area. The test simply monitors your breathing while you sleep. For more information about sleep apnea, go to HomeApneaTest.com or call 1-877-54-APNEA, 1-877-542-7632. 
If you're suffering from chronic pain, migraine headaches, or any other health issues, it might be your back telling you it's time for an adjustment. Come check out the new Health Chiropractic Center in Concord. We restore the curvatures of the spine to bring you back to good health and wellness. Our specialists will provide a full examination and x-rays for free. Just mention the SLAM show. Call now for an appointment at 925-759-9722 or online at thenewhealthcc.com. In order to transform your health, you have to try something new. The New Health Chiropractic Center. Yes, welcome back everyone to the Slam Show. This is the sports and news segment sponsored by Davinos. Mm. Mm. Yum so yum. Good. Pepperoni and pineapple. My, check them out on my Instagram. Thanks to Anna over there at uh, Davinos in Pleasant Hill. That's right. You got to try them out. They are scrumptious. That killer peas pizza, right? Just like the killer peas from the Giants, he leading right into Benny Mac, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, Nick McHugh, thanks for the shout out, man. I see you in the chat room. Uh, you know I'm bringing the munchies, man. It's, it's all good, man. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, thank you, Nick. And Oaktown and the rest are in the chat room. This episode is going to be off the hook. Starting with our sports uh, Giants correspondent in the house. Let's have a big round of applause for Benny Mack. Woo! Yeah, hey. Benny Mack. And we, thank you, guys. Hey, got this. We, we brought him in because we need to have our San Francisco Giants fix before we get into any NFL talk. So without further ado, Benny Mack, break it down because they are on a roll. Well, I think, you know, the great part about right now is it's my favorite time of the year. Football season is starting, but then you also have the playoff run. Everything's coming into focus. Um, I mean, I think the Giants have gotten healthy, kind of turned the corner. Um, they're pitching well. They're playing well. Um, I mean, I'm pretty excited. I, I feel like the Dodgers had a chance to really pull away and run away with it. That's right. And, uh, and they just never could put it together. Um, and, uh, and they're letting us hang around. And if you let us hang around, we're only three games back now. Everything's going to be figured out in the West. We play everyone else but Colorado two more times, six games against the Dodgers. Um, pitching, hitting, things are going good. I think one of my favorite things, I know I have a very limited amount of time. So Break it down. I will, uh, I will love any questions about anything. But one of my favorite things right now that I, I was happy to be on the show to talk about was I really kind of want to put it out there to the world about Hunter Pence maybe being the MVP. And I think that uh, everybody's talking about Kershaw. They're talking about John Carlos Stanton. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the two, the two guys. But there's no way that we're here. If Hunter doesn't step up and go into the leadoff role, yeah. he, he does everything. He leads the league in hits. He leads the league in runs scored. He's hitting right around 300. It's a real similar year to Andrew McCutcheon last year mm -hmm. with his stolen bases, his average, his, except that he did more. He's had to bat fifth. He's had to bat second. He's had to bat first. And uh, hashtag MV Pence, if anyone is uh, <laughs> yeah. start throwing that around, I think uh, he, he plays every game, never misses a day. Um, I, I And... You know, aside from the fact that Clayton Kershaw would be upsetting to me if he won the MVP, I don't really think pitchers should be the MVP uh, to begin with. Um, everyday players should. I think everyday they players. They already have their own award, yeah. right? The Cy Young, let them get right. the Cy Youngs. And, and and so another thing on the Cy Young, um, again, if you guys have questions about particular Giants, but I'm I'm taking my, I'm getting on the platform here and I'm, I'm talking about my guys. Um, <laughs> if something happens and Kershaw doesn't have a strong month, Mm -hmm. If we catch him and somehow win the division and he, you know, goes 0-2 or does something like that, what also people don't know, there's been uh, five pitchers of the month in the National League. Kershaw's won twice and Bumgarner's won twice. So um, clearly the ERA battle, Kershaw's under two. I mean, incredibly dominant. Uh, but if he has a rough month and Bumgarner, we hop on his back and he leads us to win the division. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's going to have to get into the talk sometime, too, at some point. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, his numbers are there. Their strikeouts are equal. Um, you know, they both have 17 wins. You know, the ERA is a full run different. That's a huge It's a huge swing. Mm -hmm. But that can all change yeah. in, uh, in 30 days or so, 20 games or whatever we got left. So Lots I'm left. throwing that out there to everyone. Keep positive. Vote for our people. 
Hey, Bum Gardner has the better bat than Kershaw, well, right? He has a better bat than half the guys on the team. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he could play every day. Yeah. Hey, what about Yasiel Puig, man? Dropping down to like a, a, a hundred batting average the last month. I mean, that's been awesome for us. Well, you know? I, I love to see it. Yeah. You know, I don't root bad. I don't. You know, you, you always hate the Dodgers anyway. And I don't root against. <laughs> I don't root against anyone in particular. Um, a lot of people have problems with his attitude and the way he plays the game. I think mostly he just has fun, but um, but it's when you it's when you don't concentrate. And you have all those kind of bat flip antics and all these kind of things that you do. He's learning now at this level that all that silliness takes away from your concentration, takes away from what you're trying to do every day. And, uh, and it, it's measurable. You know, it's measurable. And I think as a young kid, for him to move forward, mm -hmm. he's going to really have to close all that stuff out and really kind of lock it in. He's as skilled as anybody. Exactly. There's no reason why he couldn't, but, you know. I hope he doesn't. All you right. I mean, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Well, I um, have a question for you. Yes, sir. Does Bum Garner have a chance for 20 games, winning 20 games? I mean, he'd have to go 3-0 and in the month, mm -hmm. you know, um, but absolutely. Okay. He's, he's, he just was, you know, pitcher of the month last month. He's carrying us right now. He's, he's riding, and, and uh, he goes out and throws seven innings every day and keeps us in the games. Absolutely. I think... I think he has a chance to win 20 games. Um, we've been thinking about it for a while, but he had a little – it's it's hard to get wins sometimes, you know, the way that bullpens work, the way everything works. It's hard to accumulate those wins. Um, uh, and 20 wins doesn't mean as much as it used to. You know, it's 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 definitely a milestone, but the, with all the cybermetric stuff and everything, wins are much less uh, – they're less valuable as far as a stat. I mean, winning games is what matters. But um, it would be great to have him win 20 games. It would be great to get him all the accolades he deserves. Cool. You know, he flies under the radar a lot. People very rarely, only the, the guys in the real know will bring him up yep. about being as dominant as he is. But he's one of the best pitchers in the league. And we're definitely on his big old broad shoulders, right? Now. Right on, so, right on. Quick question. It's not player related, but you know how the Giants have those themed um, uh, games where they have like Absolutely. Star Wars Day, the Bruce Lee. Do you right. go to any of those? Um, I go to Metallica night. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but me and my uh my buddies have season tickets so you know you, those are special tickets you buy and you sit mm, in a special section see, okay. and you get a special giveaway so you're just special I, I, so i don't i don't I, I might be there but i'm but not you need I'm a not, special yeah, ticket to yeah, get the it's okay. a special thing okay. they have a filipino heritage night yeah season, truth was there covering pacquiao's night yeah 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 that's right yeah he was out uh taking batting practice and doing a doing another thing uh, another quick shout out here. We have a, a, a minor league baseball team in San Rafael, uh, the San Rafael Pacifics, and they uh, are the Western Division champions uh, this year. So that's kind of fun. I go to a lot of those games too. The park's right by my house, and uh, say what's up to those cats. You, you know, know what? Not. Congratulations, man! They beat out uh, the team in which my buddy broadcasts for, in the Vallejo Admirals, and then Pittsburgh they beat out the, the Pittsburgh too. team that yeah. spurned me, man. I was supposed yeah. to broadcast their games, and then they told me they wanted to go with someone for free. So I said, more power to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mike Hill is all about the money. That won't be yeah. me. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, yeah. it, you know, I hey, I feel money I've, making money. I, I've I've done it. In, I've done it enough to the point where yeah, now there is a price tag. I won't <laughs> I won't do it for free. So. Hey, man. Hey, man. You know, you. I haven't been to a game at City Park yet. I, I went to in San Rafael when the when Pittsburgh came into town. I went and checked out a game. Yeah. It was the Eric Burns game. I don't know if you yeah, uh, yeah. heard yeah. anything about Eric Burns, but um, so I get a chance to know a lot of the players hanging out in town and stuff like that. So it was cool to see Burnsy running around and. A couple weeks before that, Canseco came out and had a home run derby. That was kind of fun. Not his twin, right? Uh, not his twin. <laughs> not his twin. You know he does the switcheroo yeah. sometimes. And I see him swing the bat, so I don't think his twin could hit him like that. <laughs> he was hitting softballs like 450 feet. It was Damn. fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Hey, Betty Mac, man, I got a question for you, Yes, man. sir, please. I uh, hate to interrupt you. Don't but, uh, be. No, it's question you know, time from the whole yeah, crew. I mean, you know, first off, you know, I just love the whole Killer Peas theme. I mean, you could bring up – Posey right now. They're saying with the way he's been playing lately, he might get himself he's back into the MVP in. race. I saw that hashtag um, too. You know, of course, Panda, you know, is he going to be a giant again in, in, in 2015? Uh, Panic. I mean, he's putting up a case for rookie of the year right now. I mean, just the way he's playing in the second half. And then, of course, Jake Peavy Friday night, what he did <laughs> in the range there. suspended game yep. saying, I'm going to pitch three and I'm going to come back after the range delay and I'm going to pitch some more. And just you know what that can do to a ball club. You know that that just shows, OK, this guy, it, it, he's our rock. If he's going to come out there and pitch like that hard for us, then we got to play our tails off for him. And look at the way he's been pitching. And, and then and, and uh, I mean, just the killer peas in general, man. What do you think of that theme? Well, Peavy's a good place to start. I mean, yeah. you love the theme. First yeah. Of all. You love the theme. <laughs> Anytime 
you can get some kind of little slogan working. You know, right. I mean, it gets that's a good sign. Yeah, pants, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It means there's a lot of energy, a lot yeah. of a uh, lot of interest. But God. To see what PV did the other night, just a touch on that. I, I don't know that it's ever happened before. Yeah, I've I mean, never and seen even, it. And uh, uh, even listening to, reading some of the stuff about it, listening to the broadcasters, they couldn't think of another time that someone had that long of a layoff and came back. And, and, and that's what I love about the Giants as a group. I mean, they're all willing to do that. That's why, I mean, nobody plays harder than any of our P's, you know. And I, I think Pablo's coming back. I mean, I really do because the way he's played the second half, you know, he was hitting, I don't know, 205, right. 210 for a large part of the season. He's up to 285. And and I know it's a numbers game and maybe not everybody understands, but the, as well as you have to do to raise your batting average that many points uh, in that short of a – or not over the course of the second half of the season, um, if, the, if the halves were reverse, he'd be an all-star. Yeah. And, and they're talking about – he's definitely in the uh, gold glove consideration right. at third I mean, he base too. plays mean defense. So, I mean, he uh, – when we needed him, we jumped on his back for a while, too. So I, I think I was worried. I thought there's no way we're going to sign him. If he just has a total letdown season, um, there's just no way that we're going to be able to bring him back. And what a loss that would be for the fan base and all the panda hats and all that stuff. But uh, he's showing his true colors, you know. And we all are as a team. We I say that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you we have an interest. Are, because, you know, we've been down this road before yeah. now. And we know that you have to be putting it all together now. Right. That nobody panicked when we had the worst month ever. We went from 20 games above 500 to all of a sudden losing first place, five, six games behind the Dodgers. Like it was just a nightmare. Nobody quit. Everybody, uh, everybody, and, and panic. Lifesaver. Probably the fifth guy we were trying to put at second base. And, uh, <laughs> and he's hitting 300. He's playing good D. Um, we get to bat him in the two hole sometimes. So now that puts Pence deeper in the lineup so he can start driving in more runs. Um, Everyone's clicking. Everyone is clicking. Morse, I'd like to see Morse get back in the lineup. He's got a kind of a little oblique strain. Right. So I think he'll be back for this day, next one. But they're game. talking about him being able to play in the next series. Um, I mean, I like that. It's a good. That's a long lineup now. You know, we got everybody. Everybody from one to eight can get it done. And one more final question, then I'll let my the rest of my staff go. But um, just looking at you right now, man, you got the Kangol hat on. You've got the glasses. <laughs> you've got the beard. Very reminiscent beard. of a. Uh, very reminiscent of Mike Kruko, and especially as a bro as an <laughs> aspiring broadcaster, man. I mean, it was it was really sad to not see him in Detroit this weekend. I mean, we all I know they chronicled his condition right. back in the San Francisco Chronicle about a month ago, and and you know saying how it's just getting worse and worse, and, and it looks like Brian Johnson, I guess, is going to be the guy that's going to step in gonna fill and fill in that in role. But wasn't it kind of sad not seeing Kruko on the road trip well, there in Detroit? I, uh, I mean, I love the guy. Yeah, I loved him as a player. Mm -hmm. I think we have the best broadcasting group. You know. By far. By far of anywhere, you know. Um, especially the, the crew can kite, the, the, you know, they love each other. You yeah. see, it comes across. They're big homers, but that's all right. Um, but it does seem like his, uh, his muscle condition is worsening. I think uh, when it kind of came to light, uh, everyone in the organization knew about it, but it hadn't come to, uh, hadn't, hadn't been public. And he had, a, he had a little accident getting out of the bus, you know, and because of the way that his body was reacting and, I think he's going to have to take some road trips off. And, you know, I don't know. I think it's been moving faster than they thought it would be yeah. at this point. So, uh, you know, uh, I guess I love the guy. He's brought me so much happiness in my life. You know, I, I wish nothing but the best for him. I've had a, a, a chance or two over the course of being a giant fan and a season ticket holder to run into him and say mm. hi. And he is exactly how you see him on TV. So genuine, so kind. And, uh, you know, it's a tough one. Yeah. It's a tough one. You hate to see that. Someone that you admire so much. Um, Mike Kruko, get well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Anyone else have questions for I do. Benny Mack? I do. Um, just to liven the mood a little bit. What would you put on your Hunter Pence sign? If you <laughs> made one? The one. Well, I, I plan on bringing out an MV Pence sign. Okay. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I would say something about his scooter, probably. You know? <laughs> It'd be, you know Hunter Pence, I don't know, hates scooters or something. I don't know. <laughs> But um, isn't that interesting? What a phenomenon that kind of took life Oh, my life good. On. That was something those. else. Yeah. It started on people making fun of him, and then it has turned and into this. it turned this, like this. Chuck Norris joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. Wasn't it, wasn't it uh, Bat Kid was the one that recovered it for him. So. Right, right. Right on Bat Kid. Yeah, that was fun, too. <laughs> good old Bat yeah, Kid. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I think it's great. Again, anything like that that brings that much excitement to the stadium, the guys feed off it. I mean. We're a momentum team. We've never been a team of just chuck full of superstars that just run through and win the World Series. 
they need us in the crowd yelling at them. They need it's like they, they need each other. They're a very close knit group. Um, they're exactly the kind of guys you want to root for, yep. which is why it's so cool. And it is a it is an even year, 10, 12, 14. So this is it. I think I think we're gonna make a run. I think we're gonna surprise some people. All right. Well, awesome insights there, Benny Mac. Out of the chat room, O Town ass. And this is going across the bay. Do you think the A's will make the playoffs? Well, this is, I mean, wow. Are you an A's fan, Cecilia? I am not a sports fan. Oh, I thought because you, looked, you had a big smile on your face. That's why. No, because my, my brother is like a diehard A's fan. So okay. That's why I was smiling. I was okay. thinking of him in the back of my head. All like, right. Well, oh, he's going to like this prediction, <laughs> yeah. I hope, if it's positive. I think they are going to. Win the wild, being in the wild card game. Okay. I, I think what they don't want to do is have a one game playoff against King Felix. Yeah. And I think that that's what's going to wind up happening. Ooh. And uh, and for for playing as well as they were playing and having such a great year, I, I think it's going to be heartbreaking. You know, <laughs> I, I I would I, I want them to win. I'd like them. To, I, they have such a good squad. You mm -hmm. know, and they were playing so well. But uh, if they have that one that one game against King Felix, I mean, nobody's going to win that game. Right. But Seattle. So we'll see. You know, we'll see. I root them on. I have a lot of ace friends uh, out there. So. Oh, same here. We banter back and forth. Yeah. But Good old Ricky Mena is an ace fan. Ultimately, I yeah. want them to, you know, the more Bay Area teams in the playoffs, the better. The better. Is. Yeah. It's well, okay. if I remember correctly, my brother-in-law said to me on my birthday, look at this face. The A's are going to win the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, dude, oh, okay. like, okay, whatever, <laughs> yeah. bro. Like. No, man, this is for real. This is their year. And it's funny, man. You know, you make maybe one trade too many. You know, they came up being the big surprises. Billy Bean not spending the money. Finally goes out and does does his darn thing. But, uh, you know, Mike. Shit hits the fan. Yeah, you know. What I can still you do? like the trade. I think it was a good trade. I think I think it was a good trade. Um, I, I think they had to make a move. And uh, Cespedes is going to be awesome in Boston, by the way. See, He's and that's the thing. Like, I, I, thought, yeah. I thought Samarja was great. I think going for Lester, I saw why they were trying to do it because they knew the Tigers were probably going to end up getting priced, so they right. felt they had a matchup. Mm -hmm. But I just thought they gave up too much for a guy that who knows if they're even going to sign Lester next year. You know, if they if they knew for sure they were going to sign Lester again next year, then I'd say okay, trade's worth it at that point. But for not knowing if they're going to sign him, and you give away a big bat like that. I don't know, man. Well, they're clearly playing for this year. Yeah, do you know what I mean. It? They're trying to do it. They're trying I mean, to win defense this year. wins championships. Um, you know, and Billy Bean said I'm going all usually, in. Yeah. But I think I think that they you know. They went for it. They shoved. I I don't have anything bad to say about Billy Bean. I, I still I still think they would do it, and I would do the trade sure. the same. Um, you hate to see the wheels fall off the way that they have, and I think picking up uh, Adam Dunn is going to help uh, carry some of the. He's already hit a couple home runs, and you know I think that's he's going to be fun to watch. That big old monstrous man. <laughs> like you said, but, uh, it's it's just hard, man. That division, you know, King Felix isn't going away, and then. Mike Trout, I mean, there's a reason why he's probably going to win MVP in the AL. He's Well, they're running phenomenal. away with it. And that's the thing that nobody really was talking about is as well as Oakland was playing, the Angels were step-by-step step with them the whole way. Yeah. You know, they just stayed two games back, two games back, and who was going to break? And, you know, the A's broke stride, and the Angels kept rolling and just mm -hmm. ran right over them. And I still hope the Angels somehow collapsed because I'm still pretty pissed that they took away Bonds' chance to win a World Series. Well, he owned them in that series. and It was a fun series. I yeah. mean, game six – you know, yeah, I thought, game I six. Thought we had it, Me too, know? man. I, I was going to junior or uh, homecoming dance my junior <laughs> year, and we were up. And then my cousin tells me once he gets to the dance that uh, they took Russ Ortiz out, and all hell went yeah. loose. So. And you were yeah. crushed. Well, I knew going into a game seven back in Anaheim with the rally monkey and everything, I knew it was going to be tough. Ugh. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, Benny Mac, great insights. Uh, thank yes. you, brother. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Benny. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. I don't know baseball, but I enjoyed it. MV <laughs> Pence, baby. I, I, I like that, man. He's a consummate pro, consistent, and uh, yeah, that's that's a hell of a hell yeah. of a player to be for MVP. I think if you, if you really take a second, anyone and and you, like the same thing happened last year, with McCutcheon was kind of a Pence type player, fills up the whole stat sheet, um, and it was uh, Goldschmidt that was. That would hit 30 home runs, hit 300, 125 RBIs, kind of like Carlos or like John, uh, John Carlos, Carlos Stanton, Stanton is yeah. doing, and uh, and McCutcheon won it. So um, I would just like to hear more. Conver I think nobody's even taking it seriously. Right. He he just goes out and does it, and just because he makes it look easy doesn't mean it's easy, you know. And he's done everything we asked. It would be fun, but I don't mind Posey being there. But even look at that. He's so you know he's such the poster child, right? Yeah. That as soon as he got hot, all of a sudden he's right in the race, you know. 
And quietly, Pence has been doing it all year, just grinding it out. But I'd be happy either way. As long as it's not Kershaw. <laughs> MVP. Right. <laughs> there you go. All right. Go Giants. And let's see how the rest of the season plays out. All right. I wanted to touch base a little bit on the Ray Rice thing, but due to time constraints, we're just going to go right into the Niners situation as far as them winning the first game. Congratulations to all the fans out there that went out yeah. to Woo! Cowboy Stadium and witnessed a nice freaking <laughs> new teammate named Tony Romo. Being able go. to throw <laughs> to the other, uh, to the Niners in a way that was very nice of him. These <laughs> these Christmas gifts over and over again. Uh, outside of all the joking, the Niners, they did pull it off. That's my quarterback. <laughs> yeah, that's what freaking T.O. said. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that they have to kind of tighten up, especially the run D and so forth. And obviously the penalties that are being called on a little touchy coverage uh defensive issues other than that it's going to be promising going into levi stadium next sunday night which uh they are going to face uh, our boy benny mack uh Ice his, Mike. yes <laughs> mike satero right? mike satero mr. Bears, Bears yes down. mr bears this is his team <laughs> and i'm pretty sure the niners will come out victorious and some other news to add on with the niners uh running back lamichael james was released due to his request and due to the ray rice situation i'm kind of predicting that lamichael james will be going to the ravens just so it's a little hey i hooked you up with anquan bolton hook me up with one of your players definitely some brother to brother love there exactly Absolutely. exactly so uh does anyone want to touch on really quick uh, on the niner uh, cowboy game yeah i'll touch on all that real quick man well first off uh <laughs> yeah, <sound> kind of <laughs> creepy. <laughs> first off i know right yeah. you got, six, you got 60 seconds. no hey you know what niners did play hard uh you know romo gave us a couple of goodies and um you know he's always due for those but just where the the way he made them were just really shocking. Uh, Patrick Willis jumping out in front of that one in the end zone, but uh, no, Niners look good. A Kaepernick looked like he really is a. Uh at least in the first game, shown that he matured a lot in the offseason. And you uh, were worried that he wasn't going to do anything due to the no, preseason. I, I wasn't worried. I was worried about the offensive line when when we were talking about that. And and I still think that they didn't really give him the uh, you know the the upfront blocking that he needed. I mean, those two touchdowns he made clearly on his ability to scramble. And I mean that one, the second touchdown to Vernon where he was nearly stumbling and throws that dart. I mean that was just amazing. Laser, um, laser, yeah. And uh, but the defense, man. I mean that was really disheartening because. You know, I could count on a hand in five years how many 100-yard rushers they've allowed. You know, and so to see him just allow a 100-yard rusher from DeMarco Murray, it's not like he's Adrian Peterson, not like he's Marshawn Lynch. He's not me, like freaking Tony eyes. Dorsett or yeah, anything. Yeah, you know, so to allow him to go for 100, I was kind of disappointed. But, I mean, like you said, you got to stay positive. I mean, heck, they had a, you know, 28-3 to three lead at halftime. Uh, I mean. Kill the uh, clock. Game yeah, over. Yeah, I mean, the game was over. Uh, you know, Vernon came out. Uh, Crabtree kind of, uh, at first I was really disappointed. I was like, why is he wearing blue cleats, man? But then once I found out that it was for his foundation and everything. And he's going to auction it and off, he, yeah. You know, he rocks the Jays, so you got to love that. Uh, but I was at first I was like, man, what's he doing wearing blue cleats, man? If I was coach, I wouldn't let him come out in blue cleats. Like, dude, you you know, team colors. I thought I, I, I thought there was a rule against that at first. Yeah, there you, is. You can be yeah. fine. And, uh, yeah. I, I'm sure he's just going to accept the fine and pay it. You know, Crabs, he, yeah. he has the money. And then Frank Gore, you know, uh, props to him going over 10000 and I really, really hope that if he can play next year, regardless if we win the Super Bowl or not, if he feels he can play, I hope the Niners sign him to that one-year deal. Because I would hate to see him get away like Montana did and Rice did and Ronnie Lott did and Roger Craig did. And he, and Roger Craig even admitted, you know, like it was – it. It's the one thing that still like gets at him this day that he couldn't finish his career with the Niners. That he chose to play that year extra with another team. He wishes that he would have just stayed retired, retired as a Niner. So I really hope that they don't. You know, I would hate to see Frank Gore play for someone else just because yeah, I know that El Guapo is the next back. I mean, he looked great yesterday, didn't he? Shooting out the hole and Carlos Hyde, man, aka El Guapo on Twitter. He's he's gonna be. The, the next he's great the back next for one, us. Yeah, yeah so. I was just going to touch on that. That kid is amazing. Carlos Hyde. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you about Frank Gore. I mean, he was our one guy that kept us through all the lean right. years there. And 
We, we, we ran the ball so many times. He took such a beating for us. You and know? that's and why uh, it's cool he acknowledged uh, the line about that, you know, but the, the fact that he did go through them bad years and you know, Staley was there with them and everything. Yeah. You know? um, so, I mean, you got to love the guy. Yeah. Maybe one of the most underrated backs in football. People don't give him enough uh, enough credit for as much work as he does, you know. Right. I really thought we were going to rush for like 300 yards against uh, Dallas. That's a little bit I, – I, I wish uh, our running attack – was a little executed a little bit better, mm-hmm. you know, but um, but we won, and that's fine. And and everything you said about cap is true. Yeah. Just throwing lasers. Yeah, yeah. and like lasers. I said, making the progressions. You know, l- checking down. You could see he was looking for different receivers, not just getting locked on on Bolden or Crabs or Vernon. He was looking for Stevie Johnson. I didn't see Brandon Lloyd really have too much of an impact. And then really quickly, just on the Lamichael James deal and and all the reports that came out before the game with. You know, tension in the locker room. They don't think Harbaugh, you know, he's about I think that was from Jerry Jones. I I don't know. I I I think think, Jerry Jones put that out for a distraction. I I think it was LaMichael could be the The the, one. Yeah, he might have been the the, one that, that, the mole. mole. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, this whole time he's been disappointed that he hasn't seen playing time. He's over and over again. He's had Twitter rants about, you know, oh, Harbaugh's not playing me. You know, I deserve to be playing. If you you really deserve to be playing. Yeah, why would you do that? That's so tacky. Yeah, you know, like. Either be a team guy or keep the thoughts to yourself, but don't just come out just to, oh, poor me guy, you know? And, and who knows? Maybe he was the one that, if, I mean, no one else was saying it. Willis wasn't saying it. Gore wasn't saying mm-hmm. it. Vernon Davis wasn't saying it. No one else was saying, uh, you know? I mean, if anything, they all said, hey, Harbaugh is a winner. He wants to win, and we want to play for a guy that wins. So all that stuff, I mean, uh, I don't know. Blow Maybe it was LaMichael that, that was the, the mole, so. <laughs> You never know. I think it's a good thing to get him out of here. We we have some backs. I mean, it only leaves us with Gore and, and El Guapo with uh, Kendall Hunter being down and out. But um, obviously, we do we do a lot in the passing game now with all the weapons we have. So yeah. uh, to LaMichael, I, I wish you the best, man. But we have Ellington too, man. You know, we didn't get to see him too much. Ellington, I think, is even faster than LaMichael James. So it's looking promising. Anyone else want to add on? No. You guys all covered all the goodness. I just, I I just wish that Crabtree anything. had more play time only because he was in my fantasy and he didn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to rant about. So selfish. So right. selfish. Isn't it crazy, though, how, like, after a while it doesn't even become about your team, it becomes more about your fantasy exactly. team, you know? Exactly. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's incredible. Exactly. So uh, on to week two with the Chicago Bears, and we'll see how that I'll plays out. I'll be in Chicago the day of that game. You'll be in Chicago? I Wearing your Niner red, though, right? Yeah, I will. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Represent. Just a little vacation? Yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, moving on to our next topic. Check this out, guys. Uh, self-driving cars are the thing of the future. Coming in 2017, the largest U.S. automaker, Cadillac, will have a model that you could travel on the highway without holding the steering wheel or putting your foot on the pedal. It's called Super Cruise Technology, and this will handle all the steering, all the acceleration, and braking and you're going as fast as 70 miles per hour. And as far as being uh, a little bit familiar with this, I, I actually rode in two vehicles, one which was my friend uh, props out to Komatsu over uh, in Walnut Creek. He had the... He was actually a previous guest of the show also. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. He had the self-parking BMW, not self-driving, and that was pretty cool. You, you were able like to get parallel to a vehicle, and there's a spot there, and and do the little features thing and it'll back into well, that spot is real it, nice it's as small as a fiat so it's a really tiny car yeah yeah so i saw that firsthand the second vehicle was actually with our good old boy jt rock where the mercedes that he drove had a sort of lane feature of driverless effort and i go well bro go ahead and, and engage the feature and he and he put it on right and for a second it was actually calibrating with the road but then after like 10 seconds he had to put his arm onto the steering wheel i go what's up why, why can't you let your oh i don't trust it yeah blah 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 I'm all, what the fuck good is it if it can't really do what it's saying and he said that feature by itself was like six grand to add on to the mercedes fuck that. and he's not, all right. using, he's not it? using it yet. what a yeah. dumbass so when it comes down to the self-driving technology, yeah, it's still kind of rough on the edges and still needs to be polished. But at the same time, it is something that is going to be a formable sort of technology that everyone's going to embrace eventually. Because 
you could get a lot more done being able to sit behind the wheel, kick back just like in the video, and just either do your work, eat, eat. whatever. That's what I, would do. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Where my pizza at? I'm surprised you, you ladies aren't saying makeup because I see so many girls yeah. putting on their makeup while driving. There I'm you like, go. How are they doing this right now? There you go. And I know everyone has <laughs> an opinion on this, so we're gonna go all the way down the list, starting with Joe. Time. Slap a little bit of Marvin Gaye. A little cracking in the back seat one time. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. nah, man, I feel I feel self-driving cars are damn near the future. I've had dreams about them all the time. Really? Uh, yeah, like real. <laughs> dream. But it's like, why, what am I doing all the way in the back seat? <laughs> and there's nobody driving, and we're I'm literally on a freeway, and I'm kind of tripping out. And then I know it was, I don't know if you ever had those kind of dreams. It like feels real, real. I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, also, uh, from that dream alone, when I was when I was younger, I started coming up with ideas like, oh, this should be like a thing. Where you just drive onto a freeway and it attaches to the bottom of your car and mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. you know it's like a conveyor belt and it just takes you to the destination. Then Absolutely. you just exit when it's coming up. Just the you know like the monorail, like the monorail <laughs> or something. But at the same time, I mean, uh, there's a lot of things that because I was just watching this thing on Henry Ford and you know just how his innovative mind was and pioneering the automobile industry and how it was all about convenience. Everything is all about convenience. How to get somebody to do less. And get further and get uh, get more done efficiency and just uh, kind of like all that time you're doing in the car. I mean, there's so many things you can get done as well. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not anti um, I'm not anti technology or anything or anti the things. There's a lot of things that I like to stay in control of and really be in control of, uh, just because I feel like a lot of people are allowing themselves to be dependent on machines and dependent on certain things. And um, that's just something that I'm just that's just a personal thing for me. That I like to be uh, more in control of that nature. But yeah, I mean, it seems like a cool idea, cool concept. Uh, definitely will ho- hope to see it be affordable for everybody and uh, definitely be good for the economy. And uh, let's just see how the future pans out. I so see. right now you're on the fence, technically on it. No, I'm technically and literally on a stool. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for the thing in itself, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, okay. uh, progressive. So you're all, you're, yeah, you're I'm all about it. progressive. Okay. Keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. But at the same time, really stay uh, yourself. I mean, know what you are, what you're capable of doing. I know you can get out of that car and walk. Yeah. Uh, I know you could take a bike. I know you could uh, drive a car. I know you could do all these things. Don't allow yourself to just be like, Reliant. oh, shit. Yeah. My car isn't not. Being able to drive by itself, I got to drive now. Look how, oh, my God, I have to drive now, <laughs> man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I just don't want that. I'm pretty sure that's going to fucking happen anyway. But Absolutely. I, <laughs> yeah. Well, my car is, it doesn't fucking drive by itself <laughs> anymore. I have to fucking what? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Mike Hill. Oh, man. I love this topic. Uh, I'll try to keep it short and sweet, but I love this topic. As a guy who's uh, been in three totals in five years, I think Why do you great. talk about like you're proud of it, dude? Well, no, I'm just like, I am I think this is awesome. I've been waiting for this because maybe it'll stop me from doing that. You know, like as a guy who's got speeding tickets, it's like, okay, that's my only question on it is if, uh, if, if something does happen, does it get charged to me for owning the car or is it, is it the car that's going to get in trouble for speeding? or something so Good it's point. like yeah so you know but like no nah, man I'm, I'm all about it like i remember when i first started reading about it what was it almost three years ago when i first heard that google was going to link up with the toyota prius yeah. and mm-hmm. they were going to make the google car and it was toyota priuses were going to be the main ones mm-hmm. maybe the honda fit or whatever but i know prius was the main one driving it right and um and i was like this is awesome like you know just because like i said i mean i'm not proud of my wrecks but it's like I mean, obviously, I'm paying a pretty penny for insurance right now, so that's where a lot of my money's going towards. So no wonder you can't get an Xbox One right now. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm, paying, I'm paying 400 a month on insurance for one car right now, dude. Oh fuck that. Yeah, man. <laughs> so it's like you better get yourself a Segway or something. Yeah, something. <laughs> Bart. So, Bart. It. Take Bart, and you're there, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, well, you can't. You put 400 dollars in a Clipper car. You I know, couldn't right? take. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't take Bart out to Modesto. I couldn't take Bart out to Stockton. So. Um, you know, it, oh, I, you got Pleasanton now. Yeah, I'm in Pleasanton now. There's <laughs> Bart that goes as far as uh, Dublin, and I still got to drive to Brentwood at times. So, I don't know, man. I I think it's really cool. I I'd love to invest in one if I could. Uh, once everything kind of gets off my record and I could start saving money again, and by then, two by 2017, it will. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so perfect I, th- timing. Th- like I said, the only question I've always had since first reading about it is if there's a ticket, if there's a wreck, who's at fault? 
And if they can figure that out, if it's against me, or if it's not against me, then I'm all with it. If it's still somehow my fault, then I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, enough. Yeah. Enough violations yeah, on my record. I'm cool. Yeah, okay. you're basically saying you don't want to take responsibility for the way you were driving. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I could, just <laughs> picture, I could just picture, like, it going all bad. It could go really, really great, and it could go really, really bad, really fast. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Like, you could tr- put all your trust in it, like your boy was saying with the Mercedes. Like, you put yeah. all your trust in it. All of a sudden, something happens, and then it just all goes to shit. Or uh, somebody hacks it, and all of a sudden, you're getting driven yeah. to the to nowhere. You're Good trying point. to get out. You're right. trying to break the window. Yeah. It ain't happening. You're like, well, and you have to be the person hacking it. Like, you're going off the cliff, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I that. That's some oh, kind of glitch. Hard. I don't like you. You're going off the cliff. That's what I would do. Very aggressive. Today. But uh, that's <laughs> just, you know. Cindy, add on. Okay, well, you know, I, I'm kind of on the fence. Like you mentioned with your friend's car, a $6,000 feature that you don't fully trust yet anyways. And and like he was saying, I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong. Anytime you get a car that has, you know, all these high-tech features, there's a few things you have to realize. One, um, you know, in five, four or five years, not only can it, like, break and you have to buy parts from the dealer that are going to be hundreds, yep. if not especially a couple Cadillac. thousand bucks. Yeah, especially from Cadillac. There's that. And, you know, in five years, it's outdated technology. How many of you guys got a, you know, CD player in your car that you don't even use? You know, because no. your car is a couple years old. Mm. And, or how many, you know, CD player, tape player, uh, you know, you, the GPS that you didn't even subscribe to. Or, like, back in the 90s, a built-in phone. Like The car when, phone was so cool, Yeah, though. when these things come out, that's what we think. Like, oh, wow, this is cool. This cutting-edge technology. But, you know, with the rate at which things develop now... That stuff's outdated. You you know, when they made a new iPhone charger, when iPhones came out, everyone's like, well, shit, I can't use any of my accessories. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that, that's kind of how I feel about that. It's either going to be super buggy, being in its new stages, you know, have all the malfunctions, mm-hmm. you know, not, you know, people being over-reliant on it rather than, you know, taking responsibility about how they're driving. Yeah, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I mean, we joke about it, but there's going to be people that try to do that, especially yeah. when you think, who buys Cadillacs? Old folks and thugs. <laughs> 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 people that are not the best drivers on the road anyways. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a damn good point right there. <laughs> Thank I want you. A Cadillac. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's I think people I'm both. I, I would have... <laughs> <laughs> Sit next old to a thug. <laughs> You're an old thug. No OG over here. <laughs> oh but, boy. Uh, but I mean, think about it. Like you got somebody that's like 85 years old, thinking their car is gonna drive itself, and they don't pay attention. Mm. You know, and they're already you know challenged as a driver, mm. and they might not even know how to work all that cool technology. They might just think that that car drives itself. Yeah. And then you know that's really dangerous. Agreed. So uh, I'm kind of on the fence about this feature. It's, it's nice to have cruise control, but, you know, it's your car. It's your responsibility. You still need to be watching for what's going <laughs> on in the road because you never know. Your car can't predict, you know, if there's some drunk asshole swerving all over the place. Or like Sage and hacking into your system or and yeah. getting you over the cliff. <laughs> or, you know, or that could be a terrorist target. Exactly. Well, that's or the thing. Something. I wonder if they're going to have, like, some kind of infrared that, you know, if they see a car maybe running a red light and you're supposed to go green, like it'll stop. And it's just supposed to have all yeah, that. Yeah, all that. So, I mean, yeah. it should be good. You know? Sage, add on. Well, don't get too excited, people, because this just because it drives itself, that doesn't mean you have to pay for the feature. Like, you know, OnStar, you have to pay for that. You know, you don't just, you know, just because you have that capability pressing a button, like, oh, I locked myself out. You still have to pay for that service. So I'm not all for it, too. I'm just going to wait for the flying cars because <laughs> there you go. I don't want to be sitting in traffic mm. just because it drives itself. I want to go upgrade. And by then it's like, you're right. It, that, that feature would be like outdated. You might as well just save up for a flying car. Fuck a flying car. I'm uh, trying to fly. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll see. That's the thing. We did <laughs> talk about, fly. I ain't going to upgrade my car. I'm going to upgrade me. <laughs> we did talk about that on mm-hmm. the episode on the flying cars. I yeah. believe 2020. So three years later, yeah. you got yourself a flying car. So yeah. Yeah. everyone starts saving their fucking money right now, boy. Cause a lot of good shit's coming. Betty Mac, we're living that I, real uh, life. Jetson's life. Yeah, I don't like it at all. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a terrible passenger, by the way. I'm like the worst. Well, passenger. thank you. So when I when someone's driving, I'm always nervous. Like I'm always uncomfortable. I always I'm always watching out. I'm I'm really I'm I'm an awful passenger. <laughs> Holding the ocean handle <laughs> the, whole the whole time. <laughs> And, uh, and I can't possibly imagine <laughs> relaxing 
while the car drives itself. Nobody's I'm going to be like <laughs> checking all this shit, making sure everything's right. I can dig it, bro. There's just no way that I'm going to get any kind of relaxation at all. Yeah, man. I'm going to be like every second, I'm going to be driving this or hitting that or doing something. So that will be money I'll be saving. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's no chance that I'm getting. Now, there are other people that I think could really benefit from this technology. Um, but me personally, I think I'll, I think I would pass on it. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. I could, I just can't imagine all right. that I would even be able to relax at all. Cecilia, <laughs> Cecilia add on. Um, I have to agree. I would pass on that. I already pass on regular cars anyways. Like people who know me know I walk a lot. I would prefer to be in the comfort of my own two legs going where I need to go. Um, one, because I don't trust other people driving. And then second, like. It's just machine, you know, coming back to the whole responsibility thing. Like people have less and less responsibility now. They don't want to be responsible for things. And I think that's a big problem. Mm. Okay. It's okay. an issue. It's like we want to be less liable for the things we do. but. So this is just going to be a pathway to destruction. I think so. Because we got like buzz kills from you and Benny <laughs> Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, really. No, no. and no. That's just how, a personal choice. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. just, well, you know. I mean, how lazy do you let yourself get? Yeah, you're going to be lazy to drive a car so you can, what, work more? Um, and that in itself, working that much is destructive to yourself. Okay. And how I mean, do, where, where, do so you, uh, many... where do cocktails come in on this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, now, wait, I'm you still right, can't well, drink I'm and drive. I'm yeah. rethinking this now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 New game plan. Because, I may yeah. have found an angle here. Okay. I may have found an angle that would uh, Get him my drunk Cadillac enough. could be automated, I think, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> backseat bar action. All right. All right. I, yeah. I see you, Cadillac. Reminds me of Anchorman 2. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's driving the. Well, if you, do, if you do get in a car accident, <laughs> at least you won't feel it. Oh, no. Oh, Man. See, that's another thing. Like, what what is the the exterior going to be? What is the built going to be? Because the more I notice cars, cars uh, more lately have been uh, more destructible. Yeah. Than <laughs> right, is. right. Because back in the days it'd be steel, and then now it's like carbon fiber, and you know what I mean. Like, I don't know. Well, it's not a Volvo, so definitely not like you know that steel body frame. It's a Cadillac. Yeah. Yeah. Well, overall, just to close this out and to summarize everything, we're all going to be alive to witness this. And whether we're going to support the technology, spend it. Oh, it's happening. It, yeah. we're, we're going to experience it. And I think it's going to be something that we have to be very up to date with and make sure that we are understanding of it. Not just going ahead and spending X amount just to have the experience or even brag that we have a self-driving car or a flying car. It's all about making sure it's done right. It's just like the whole DJ having turntables that trigger MP3s on your computer. That was that technology was around in the 90s. It wasn't refined and polished until the mid-2000s. How about the Wi-Fi one? The Wi-Fi car now. That's awesome. There you go. But at the same time, so there's, there's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a two, uh, it's like two sides to this coin always you know what i mean like wh wherever there's convenience there's always going to be inconvenience wherever there's you know so there's always going to be the, the always thing, yeah. there's always time. just like right now everyone has a smartphone yeah. but if we don't like if we're using it con consistency consistently for two or three hours we're going to need to power it up and if we don't it's going to be a dead freaking phone. So yeah. that's the negative of it. It doesn't last forever. Well, we were talking about like uh strangers and masseuse we're talking about strangers in the neck how people are used to just yeah. Just this, like, stretching, and, like, you know what I mean? All this, your body's getting used to certain things, and then it's uh, evolving into this weird shape of body. Yeah. The posture <laughs> based on our ability just Giant to look down. Yeah. Right Can you imagine what you were going to be when you're doing road trips and you're fucking, like, <laughs> yeah. just chilling in the car? If I can have a little bar. And maybe if they here we go me, again. And if What's they let the me, bar? And if they let me like have like a I don't know. A maybe doll, you can stand in this bad kind of boy. Fake, a doll? Uh, yeah. yeah, somebody that sits and pretends they're driving. <laughs> so, the so there are exceptions to this. The illusion. They're coming like, to me. They're like coming. the like the inflatable co-pilot on airplane. Yeah. That's exactly where I'm going with that. Exactly where I'm going with that. Oh man, that was funny. But somebody's gonna know you're in that car. Though is all I'm saying. It's yeah. like with the facial recognition with Xboxes now. Oh, yeah. They know somebody knows your home. 
may not be you that knows your, but I'm saying somebody knows your home. When you when you walk in, it says, hey, Sam, or it says, hey, Joe, or it says whoever. Creepy. It, yeah, okay, your Xbox One says, hey, Paranoid but again, much? somebody knows your home. Does that <laughs> yeah, make sense? Absolutely. Yes. When, yes. You, when you get your self-driving car, I'm sure by the time it's going, oh, yeah, make sure it's just for you. So we're going to have this thumbprint thing where you put your thumb in or you have these eye things. Yeah, so make sure it's your scan. car. Mm -hmm. It's your car. But at the same time, somebody will know you're in that car. It's coming. I'm not saying it's... Yeah. Not that, but I'm just saying somebody knows. Big brother somewhere. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Sent up around yeah, somebody. somebody knows. Yeah, I'll be putting my head out the window topic. like, look, it ain't me driving the car. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not saying it's not paranoia. It's just realistically it's real. speaking. Yeah. That when you had when you when you first had the first Model T, there wasn't none of these things. You, yeah. you were free to go wherever you wanted, and that was the freedom that they got. And then freedom just got too far with this car thing. Like it's going too far. It's like. Well, we'll see how it plays <laughs> out. Be nice to sleep. That's, that's what I would do first. Yeah, because that's how I recommend. This guy wants I to drink. That guy wants to sleep. <laughs> I guarantee this won't be the last time we'll be talking about yeah. self-driving cars or advanced technology. Definitely here trying on. to experience it. Exactly, exactly. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a quick music break and be back with our special guest, Cecilia French, and her stories as being a certified. Therapist. Yes, we'll be back here on the Slam Massage Show. Massage therapist. Massage therapist. So, <laughs> and I get you. paid enough to be a therapist. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Always trippin', she don't wanna let me do me I'ma hit this club, live it up Baby, say bye-bye uh, I just tell my bye-bye I just let my girlfriend give me high-five uh, Hit the club, get a my tie she Keep trying to FaceTime, got no Wi-Fi She at the grill, watch the sci-fi I'm at the club with my getting high-high Track the wild-eye Car front, give a and she ride by Uh, yeah Cause I'm finally single. Bingo. Have a toast, I can finally mingo. bingo. Trying to get back with me though. Got better luck playing bingo. Uh. My shawty always tripping, she don't wanna let me do me. I'ma hit this club, live it up. Baby, say bye bye. Finally single, finally single, finally, finally single, finally single, finally single. Single as a dollar bill, uh, hit the club just to see if got a steal. Uh, Met some bad, they in college still. Tequila steel. shots disappear like Copperfield. Woo. Turned up, yeah, they turned up. Uh, Hangover in the morning can't hurt much. We get dumb drunk, yeah. they lift shirts up. Yeah. Safe, cause my ex wasn't worth much. Woo. Yeah, cause I'm finally single. Bingo. Have a toast, I can finally bingo. bingo. Trying to get back with me though, got better luck playing bingo. Uh, my shorty always trippin', she don't wanna let me do me I'ma hit this club, live it up Baby, say bye-bye Finally sing out, finally sing out All right, that's brand new. Mucho the narrow. Mucho the narrow. Mucho. <laughs> Mucho or mucho? Like, mucho. 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 <laughs> Featuring Raven Justice, finally single here on the Slam Show. All right, we're going into our exclusive interview, and I have a little photo oh. of our <laughs> guest. Oh my goodness. First things first, right? Yeah. <laughs> when was this taken? Um, let me see. I want to say about 2009, maybe. 2009. So you were doing a little modeling back then, huh? Yeah, it was just like freelance stuff. I have a lot of friends. I went to an art academy for a little while, so <laughs> I had a lot of artsy friends who were in photography, and I volunteered myself. 
and I enjoyed it. I like it. Awesome. Uh -huh. Awesome. <laughs> okay, let's give another big round of applause for Cecilia French, our Thank certified you. massage therapist yeah. in the house. <laughs> How'd you get into this? Um, I like to say that I just got one really awesome, great massage from a lovely Hawaiian lady mm -hmm. in Hawaii, and that completely... Well, just... island. Oahu. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it just completely just changed my mind about a lot of things. It was, it was during a transition time for me. It was right when I had my daughter, um, and there was a lot of just heavy things happening mm -hmm. in my life. So just having that was just an eye opener for me and led me down my path. Okay. <laughs> well, starting a business is always a challenge for anyone. Yes. How did you face that and, and put together your practice right now? Um, luckily, I was very blessed to um, get my space that I have right now because during um, the time I was in school, I had to do an externship. Mm -hmm. And my parents live actually right across the street from that uh, my practice right now. So really, yeah, there was one day where I was just kind of I was waiting for the bus because I went to school in the city. Mm -hmm. um, so I waited for the bus and I looked across the street and lo and behold, there was a chiropractic office. there, <laughs> <laughs> And I saw outside chiropractic and massage. I was like, what? I'm training for massage. I should go there. <laughs> so I went there. It you was know. a message in massage. It was. You know what? Now that I think about all the events in my life and things that happen, it's, you know, things truly guide you to where you need to be. Oh, yeah. So. Right on. <laughs> That's yeah. how I got there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sage and I already experienced your work and yes. you do a phenomenal job. Thank you. And we do sense that you have a very spiritual angle as far as your yes. approach to things and yes. so forth. <laughs> Now, let's talk about the preparation when it comes down to each patient. Everyone's different. Uh, yes. Do you do a, an assessment prior to for, uh, the massage thing, or do you kind of like, okay, get on here. I don't care if you smell or whatever. Let's get it, <laughs> let's get it going. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, with the smell thing, we do kind of have to, you know, let that be. Mm -hmm. But, yes, I do um, have someone fill out a sheet before they come in. Uh, or when they come in and then we kind of talk for a few minutes I get to know them kind of see how their reaction is towards massage because not everyone is for it um, and I believe that you need to really be comfortable with the person you're leaving your body with um, so I just make sure that I try and create a very comfort comfortable atmosphere for that person yeah awesome awesome now when it comes down to that atmosphere mm -hmm. <laughs> do you kind of sense right off the person's uh, behavior what their limits are or is it something you have to be straight up forward and say okay we're gonna have to get you butt naked and this is where I'm gonna touch how do you go about that um anytime like someone does an a uh, massage where you're undressed I always tell them you know undress to your comfort level um, feel free to leave your underwear on if you'd like that's my go-to phrase and um, it seems to be fine with everyone um, I haven't had any problems with anyone and um, more times than not um, people are very comfortable with me so but you know other times you can tell that someone's getting kind of nervous and it's like you know you just have to recreate that safe space for them and let them know you know I'm here to take care of you I'm not here to hurt you or harm you um, we just want to make sure you're comfortable and do what works best for you awesome awesome <laughs> yeah well, like I before mentioned, Sage and I have already went through the process. Yeah. And, and I kept my underwear on, by the yeah. way. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't wear any of that. Day. I went straight commando the whole Oops, day. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my co-host and Benny Mac are probably eager to have questions asked towards you. So <laughs> <laughs> showtime. Take it away. I mean, what about onesies? Is onesies a comfortable level? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I asked you a few questions before. You said before you started doing uh, massage therapy, you had a thing issue with uh, uh, touching uh, other people's body or even having your body touched as well. Yeah, um, I didn't have really an issue touching people. I didn't like people touching me. Other way. Okay. Yeah, um, and that was because I'm all my life I've just been very sensitive towards people. Yeah, yeah. Like when when people are near me, I can sense like you know just their energy and how they can be and um i didn't understand that at that point in time so it it really freaked me out 
So I was very, I was in a shell when I was younger. But so you're yeah. able to break out of that, and yeah. uh, does that uh, help you with uh, dealing with your clientele as well? Like still having that hypersensitivity to uh, feeling uh, how they are. Yeah, having a hypersensitivity to people's energies is very helpful, especially with massage work. Your, you know, your client is trusting you with their body. Um, and that's a very hard thing for a lot of people to do. You know, it's very vulnerable. And um, being able to, you know, um, give off a very warming and loving energy towards someone is very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So earlier in your years, did you feel like you wanted to do? I know the signs and all these things, and the yeah. practices towards that. Uh, is there something significant that happened uh, other than the massage in, uh, in Oahu? Oahu? Was there something like, oh, you always wanted to be kind of a healer? You kind of like liked helping um, people? You know, I, I've come across a lot of healers in my life, and but I didn't realize it then. I didn't really realize the whole purpose of it. I was just like, oh, that's cool. You know, they do herbal work or, you know, they do spiritual work. Um, and actually, um, I did have a Reiki class nice. when I was very young. Um, not a, not <laughs> all I can remember that. from it, though, was the potluck that happened at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I brought fried chicken, Chinese fried chicken. There it is. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I didn't understand like why, like I don't remember who put me in it or why I was there, but Very I just, I just, yeah, my, one of my friends, um, one of my friend's father is just, he's very spiritual. He's a Buddhist, um, very intensely Buddhist. So, um, I just remember that after I had those classes, he would have me work on him. And I was like, I don't understand. Why do you have me? you know, with my hands over you, like, I, I didn't understand it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know what the class was until now that I thought about it, you know. Awesome. So. <laughs> and last question, uh, and, and what do you see yourself five years from now? Do you see yourself owning your, like, yeah, I know you have your own practice, but having your own building, having your own. Um, I The ultimate goal is to have, like, a rehabilitation center, mm. um, which would include, like, fitness for your entire body as well as um, having the massage for your spiritual body. Um, yeah, I, it's all part of my practice where you really connect yourself to your body. It, it's funny because, you know, the one thing we have with us at all times is our bodies and half of us don't understand how it works. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Me? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was waiting for you to say, am I cool? Am I cool? I said it Back to telepathically. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? I, I, I've, I've definitely been a fan of the massage life uh, for about... <laughs> Whoa. Uh, well, uh, my, my girl, Janine Vegas, um, out in Discovery Bay, uh, shout out. Um, she, uh, you know, was a customer at Safeway and kind of let me know about her, uh, how she does that. And it, it, it was amazing how different I felt after a massage. And I remember like, she'd always start where I'd come in and we'd enjoy a cup of tea together. And, mm. um, sometimes I'd put like a mint in there, like a peppermint or like a honey lemon cough drop or something like that, just to kind of spruce it up. Um, and then I, I remember there was even a time where she busted out these kind of tarot cards or something oh. like that. And they were really cool. Like, I mean, it was just so crazy how it, it was perfectly describing me at that point, like what I was going through in my life at this time. Like there was like a, a positive card, like an energy card yeah. and like all these different things. And then she had me fill out that questionnaire too. And then, um, and then, you know, laid on the, on the table or whatever you guys table. call it. Yeah, table. <laughs> and, uh, Wait, not, it's not we try bed. to stay away from bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's like a doctor's bed yeah, kind of. Yeah. But, um, you know, and like, and, uh, you know, just to sit there and, you know, try, you know, for me, it's like, it's so hard to like, um, let myself be loose, I guess. Cause yeah. I'm not that I'm wound up, but, uh, you know, like I sleep in a ball and right. I, I, I like curl up my toes. Like even right now I'm clenching up my yeah. toes or how I sit. So it's so hard to just let yourself, you know, like stretch your arms out so she could like let out and you can really feel everything coming out yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and stuff. I'm, and yeah, then, I'm not gonna say yeah. Right. And then at the end she'd always say, here, here's a, a bottle of water. You're going to need this. Yeah. And I was always wondering why the water after, you know, and then she told me like, it was cause like you could start getting headaches yeah. from all of everything that's like coming out of you, you know, you're being cleansed. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. like a detox. Yeah. Right. And, and I was just so amazed. And I guess, um, I just wanted to share that experience with you yeah. and, and how much I've, I've been a couple times. I'd love to, uh, get to experience it from you Absolutely. too. Um, and I guess my question is, um, you know, when someone's coming in, 
like like how do you how do you know which body part is the one to go after like i always i always asked her that and she she was like well i can't tell you that like i just know because i'm the massage therapist like mm. i know that oh. <laughs> i know that it's your back that needs it or yeah. i know that it's your like like because she'd always tell me like oh i spent a little extra time on this because i saw something or i felt something like yeah. what is it what is that thing that you guys feel or that you know that is affecting that person in the body um your friend sounds like she's very deep into spirituality so yeah. that's probably how she does it um but you would have to ask her and oh, okay. if that's the answer she gave you she then she doesn't want to give out her secret right, <laughs> right. um but normally for me i just look at the way people walk and i look at the way they stand and their posture um that's how i get a lot of it um sometimes when i'm already in a session i can i can feel where things are very tight. I can even see the muscular imbalances too. So um, for me, that's how that works. And then as far as uh, the rehabilitation end, as far as have you had any athletes come to you and, and have you been able to get them over their injuries and, and yeah, whatnot? Yeah, um, one of my very first clients, he is actually a fencer and athletes are very um, – they beat their they beat themselves up yeah would you say um, they're the they hardest would, people to work on um no oh. not at all actually i even though they beat themselves up they're probably the easiest people to work with because you can you already know where their muscular imbalance is um and you already know what to work on well i know what to work on um and they're pretty in tune with their bodies yeah anyway, and they're very right? in tune with their bodies they can tell you what is going on with themselves um so it, it is easier to work with the people i have the hardest time working with are your everyday Joes who are sitting at their desks for eight hours a day, who don't get up from their desk, they need to get their jobs done. Um, people who sit in front of their TVs all night um, coming from that desk job. So, yeah. Yeah, because that's <laughs> one of the things I worry about. You know, like I'm hoping that Safeway isn't my ultimate career. Um, I'm really hoping that my entertainment, um, yeah. you know, takes over at some point because I hear all these people at Safeway talking about how they've had to get, you know, multiple carpal tunnel surgeries yeah. or back surgeries and it's like I don't want to end up like that you know because you're standing a lot at the register or something you know so it's just like <laughs> so a point I want to make about carpal tunnel is that it is completely controllable through massage mm. basically what happens is the fascia right in between um, your thumb here the fascia yeah the fascia <laughs> um, it basically just tightens up and the nerves that run through there get pressed on so you can easily manipulate that even with yourself just massaging it out really yeah there you go um, that's awesome and if you do go surgery route most people get another surgery to get it out again because all they do is just snip the snip the fascia let it heal but when you heal you get scar tissue built up and that puts further pressure into those nerves so something to keep in mind <laughs> cool are you experiencing no. any carpal tunnel um no but i, I did break my collarbone in college um Ooh, back ouch. when i was yeah back when i was about 2020 and i noticed that like i don't know if it's because of the way i sleep and i, I it's really hard for me to like get comfortable sometimes yeah. when i sleep but like i feel like neck pain like yeah oh, it, and yeah. it's not like every day but it'll just be like randomly for like a week and then it'll go away or and like that's the times when i've always tried to make sure like i don't care what i'm doing i've got to go see janine you know yeah. like or like even my knee sometimes will feel a certain way and i'm just like man i gotta go see janine like yeah. just maybe that'll help you know yeah um but yeah i just i don't know if it's because of the collarbone for the neck thing yeah or um with the collarbone and breaking the collarbone there's many many muscles that attach to the collarbone so you know uh chances are if you broke your collarbone all those muscles were affected Wow. And yeah, you should probably get massaged in those areas just to make sure there's no scar tissue block making blockages and um, help you with your circulation. Because that's what's really going to heal you is your circulation, your blood flow, the oxygen. And is it one of those things, just really quickly, and then I'll let Cindy go, but <laughs> is it like one of them things where like, um, how should I put it? Like if you don't go enough it's gonna like go back i mean do you have your clients coming to you on a weekly basis like is it one thing like oh i just i went to her now now i'm good for the rest of my life or like yeah <laughs> some people some people are good after one session some people um come to me weekly i have people who come to me bi-weekly uh once a month um my ultimate goal is to get people to me only once a month because that means that i've truly done my job and um you are truly doing your job because it's it's not just my job it's your job to keep up with it 
um, you know, our body is an amazing healing machine. Do they say that's like the perfect amount for a person? Like if you can go once a month and... Yeah, once a month, twice a month is good. I would say for maintenance purposes, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're not like a, a priest in the booth where they're like confessing their sins. <laughs> they're like build up all their sins, build up all this uh. like intense. <laughs> like, okay, well, I'll tell time you what, to go. I'll tell you what, no, you know what, Janine always, um, always told me to talk. Like, I mean, she'd play like the coolest, like... Uh, I guess trance music or yeah. something. It was like this, these really cool beats. Yeah, yeah, I was like, man, I, could, I I want the CD of whatever you're playing, you know. But she'd always like encourage me to talk about what's going on. I guess just to get that one-on-one -on -one approach. Yeah. But then I don't know. Maybe she used that to her advantage to trigger certain points too. You know, I don't know. Well, and too, you were saying you're a very balled up person. You hold your emotions probably. So well, I, I express them a lot too. Yeah. You know. Well, but you're right that though. Too, I do hold I'm some. But I'm sure back. there's things that you don't Definitely. express. Definitely. And those are Definitely. probably the most important things to you. Yeah. So the minute you start releasing, it's okay to verbally speak them. I have some people who talk the entire session and that's the way they emotionally release. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people cry before because that's what they were feeling. Um, I've had two people cry actually. And um, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of emotions that get stuck inside the body for sure. Cool, cool. Cindy? Um, do you feel like different areas of the body are tied to different um, causes of stress or different emotions? Do you yes. kind of notice that? <laughs> yeah. And if Absolutely. so, um, you know, what are some major ones that come up? Um, I've noticed low back issues are a huge problem. Um, foot and ankle issues are a huge problem too. Um, I've recently had like a sea of foot and ankle issues coming in through my office. Um, and that could go many different ways because it's sim symbolizing for me as well as the person. Um, so like with back issues, I notice a lot of people who have like financial stress mm. um, have a lot of back issues and then um, with the foot and ankle issues you know there's a lot of people who are not willing to move forth in their life or do make changes for themselves so there's different things um, neck issues I would say a lot of people with neck issues have a lot of um, internal emotional things happening People hold a lot of, um, I would say, like family stress or just life in general stress in their necks. We have a lot of people like this. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Benny Mack. Well, I think it's it's kind of funny because even with the, the, the remote control car thing or whatever, uh, I'm one of the people that have a hard time people touching me. Mm. And... and now that all these issues are coming up for me right now, <laughs> <laughs> clearly it's a trust thing, I think. I have, a, I have a hard time trusting. Yeah. So, well, I mean, so I, I've actually never gone and gotten a massage yeah. because I don't like someone that I don't know to touch me. I mean, I've gotten lots of massages, yeah. but never in like a, a massage by a masseuse. Yeah. Um, that, that was kind of therapist. Yeah, that was kind of <laughs> worded weird, but yeah. yeah. It was very weird. <laughs> 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 How, how do you combat that? I mean, is it just um, the, sort of the pre the pre massage workup, the conversation, the relaxing people thing? Or I mean, if someone's not comfortable, they probably wouldn't be coming to me in general. Um, well, I mean, and, uh, and and if they are coming to me, then that means there is a hint of trust there. Right. So we need, we just need to engage that. Because I, I I pretty much just deal with the physicalness of yeah. life. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I you know I. I I'm fairly active. I, I, you know, exercise and things, but um, I just, you know, it, I, going to get a massage is not on my on my cue. Right. You know, like I don't and think of that. It's not on most people. Yeah, I don't think list. of that as yeah. that, that's how I'm gonna feel better. Oh, I need a massage. Like I never think of it, but I don't know. Maybe I should. Well, <laughs> look, well looking at Cecilia's eyes, do you trust her? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say. I was gonna say this too. To kind of to kind of yeah. ask his question, though, Cecilia. So, so okay, he meets you tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Now he's thinking, okay, maybe I am just comfortable enough to to trust you because I've seen you, but it's still not tr comfortable enough. What would you do as far as what would you use to fully get him comfortable to say <laughs> you made the right choice by coming to see me, and I, I will be able to help you out? Tonight? Yes. So the only thing that I can offer is experience. So I could give you like a hand massage, a forearm massage, places where you would be comfortable. 
and not Sneaky. vulnerable. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, though, with Jedi massage. Mind trick, right? yeah, yeah, we were talking about this earlier. You know, with massage, it's a very hard thing to mis- um, explain, especially with someone who actually knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very hard to explain because there, it's a lot more than just physical manipulation of the muscles. It's deeper than that. So. Of course. Of Do you course. ever share your story of how you didn't like people touching you? <laughs> Like, I understand. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do. I do uh, share that with people. And, you know. Uh, and that helps just, out. It's yeah. like an empathy thing, you know. Yep. Absolutely. And She's a real person. Yeah, I am a real person. <laughs> yeah. I'm a real person. I have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of feelings. But yeah. Um, it, it's a very human thing. And it's more common now that people are not trusting each other. Yeah. So, kind of goes along with the car thing. Um, Cars and massages. Yeah. <laughs> That's you, Betty well. I'm working it all out. Thanks, this, is, this is fantastic. That's going to be a hell of a car. I want to ride in it. <laughs> yeah, it's just people don't want to be responsible for their emotions. They don't want to feel their emotions anymore. And it, it, it's a very sensitive thing to talk about for people. Mm-hmm. So, and Yeah, it just goes, it goes deep. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we go on to the shouts and plugs, I have one more final question. Uh, as far as the misconception of <laughs> massage uh, therapists and so forth, and we're seeing these things on the news. Those would be masseuses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, have you had certain people like approach you and they're kind of angling their <laughs> intention there? And how do you handle that? <laughs> Luckily, I have not. Um, I put out, <laughs> I put out an energy out there to block me from those people. But um, you know, I do get, I you know, friends, people. They always make jokes to me, and you know, if it. If it's my friends, yeah, I get it. But, you know, if it was a random person. Random creeper. Yeah, like a random creeper making a joke towards me. And if he was really, like, trying to get a massage, I'd be like, you know, you just close the door for yourself. I would prefer not to work with that kind of person. Especially if that's your first thought, then that's going to be your thought the entire way. Right. So, I mean, I would prefer not to even engage with that person. Smart. Yeah, that's smart. There you go. There you go. Yeah, it's it's all over the news, yeah. and you oh, yeah. hear it over in San Jose, even nearby. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but you gotta take the good and the bad. And exactly. obviously, you're doing a great effort here. Let's have a big round of applause Woo! for Cecilia French. And what is the website and contact information people could get in touch? <laughs> um, you can contact me at four one five eight one two five three four one. Um, that's one of the numbers that you can leave a message in. Um, we could talk about massage or we could book a massage. You know, if you have questions for me, that's fine. Um, you can email me at ccsportsmt at gmail.com. Awesome, awesome. Cool, cool. All right. Due to time constraints, we're going to go ahead and roll into our shouts and plugs. So without further ado, Joe, time. Take it away. All right. I want to shout out everybody in the studio for coming out and, uh, you know, especially DJ Slam and Sam for uh, hosting such a great, uh, you know, situation that we got here facilitating this amazingness uh cc cecilia french is that what it is there we go <laughs> cc <laughs> uh bernie um sage uh, did you CD. call him bernie uh, Bernie. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right benny benny i heard benny, benny. That's okay. oh really yeah. i said benny. bernie <laughs> <laughs> i meant benny I said Bernie. <laughs> I had ben- I heard Bernie Sage. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Sydney, cool nickname. Mike L. Smooth. Uh, everybody tuning in live, um, especially everybody that's just been following us for a while now. Just uh, stay tuned in. It just gets more and more better every day in every way. Uh, for everybody that's been following me and checking me out at my shows, you can check me out this Friday. I'll be in San Mateo. Shout out to the South Bay. I'll be out there at the Red Ultra Lounge Friday, 8 p.m. I believe the cover is $15, but it's an amazing lineup. It's really worth the $15. Uh, the people that are going to be on there, we got Chris Storm and Rad Ray as Herb Diggs. And we also have Tony Sparks going to be hosting that, that, the Nasty Host. So, yeah, so check it Tony out. Come Sparks. out there. Uh, you Love can follow Tony me on Sparks. Instagram, Joe underscore time. Uh, you can also get me on Facebook, Facebook backslash Joe Time Comedy. And, yeah, so if uh, you guys just stay tuned, just keep following along. You'll start seeing amazing things unravel. Nice, nice. 
Mike Hill. Well, speaking of San Mateo, man, I want to give a big shout out to Nick McHugh, originally from San Mateo. Now he's living out in Florida. Now he's uh, living in the chat room. Yeah, he's living <laughs> in the chat room. So uh, shout out to Nick McHugh. Shout out to my Modesto family, uh, the Ariannis. Uh, you know who you are, mom. Uh, sis, brother, uh, a.k.a. Sounds Diane. like a fake name, Ariana Grande and shit. What the <laughs> no, hell? No, the Ariannis. A-R-R-E or A-R-E-L-L-A-N-E-S. Uh, uh, they're my Modesto family. They were the ones that let me stay with them uh, whenever Aww. I need to. Uh, when I was working in Modesto and still even when I don't work in Modesto, I get to stay with them whenever I want to or need <laughs> to. Um, they're my ride or die folks. also want to thank Sammy Davis, uh, Stephen Davies, Chastity Montgomery. Uh, for for t- for liking my posts as well as uh, Hilda Paula High Duke and uh, Stephanie Olafit McDonald. Want to thank you, Slam, for having me on the show. CC. I was gonna say Cecilia, then I was gonna go CC. Figured I'd just make it short. I know. Uh, thank you um, for for answering my questions. Like I said, um, and you will know, you be getting? An uh, yeah, yeah, setup. definitely. Because well, well, well uh, Ricky's been talking about it for a while. Yeah. So um, any any good Ricky. friend of Ricky's a good friend of mine. <laughs> That's how I got hooked up on the show in the first place. So um, he's a good dude. Benny Mac, man, you know what you're talking about when it comes to the Giants, man. I'm glad me and you were on the whole Killer Peas theme, and I like uh, it. I like it. and and you said it best, man. Hey, it's it's an even year, and you know what that means. The last couple years, so um, the only thing that'll complete this is if my uncle Tom has a Halloween party again, and I have to come in a costume that involves an M, because in 2010 I was an M and M. Um, in 2012, I was a, I was Mario from Super Mario Brothers. Mm. So this year, I'll have to Marvin come. the Martian. Yeah, Marvin the Martian might be it. And I have to have the stash because uh, Safeway won't let us grow playoff beard. So I will have the stash, and it'll start <laughs> really fully because I, I mustache Mondays are always a thing. But then it'll start growing where I won't shave it off after Mondays in the playoffs. I'll just keep it growing, it and rock. it'll be really let thick. And yeah. Um, Lady Sage, as always, I hope you enjoyed the candy. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Uh, I will share, though. I just yeah. don't want to be going yeah. on air and get in Cindy, trouble. it's it's great to have you. Not to say that uh, it wasn't cool sitting next to Stallion, but it's always better having a pretty lady sitting by my side rather than Stallion there cracking jokes about the pizza the whole time. I was kind of mad. He was capping on my boy, uh, my bromance there. You know what I mean? Stand by your man. Stand by your man. That's right. And then, of course, Joe Time, man. Oh. You, it's always time with Joe Time, man. Time. And, uh... <laughs> he, good dude to my to my right and Carla, thanks for being in the audience. Uh, <laughs> just like Joe Time said, you could uh, find me at Twitter on uh, at Mike on the Mike twenty four. That's Mike M I K E on the and then Mike the short abbreviation for microphone M I C with the number twenty four attached to the end of it. Or you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Ill Smooth. That's M I C I L L. S M O T H. Nice. Cindy. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, guests. Thank you, crew. Thank you, studio audience. And thank you, <laughs> listeners, tuning in tonight. Um, special shout out to Divinos. Thank you for mm. providing yes. our, uh, our food order for the night, making everything more pleasant for our guests and crew, as always. And um, yeah, next week I will be in Chicago. Shut so up. I will the windy city. <laughs> yes, yeah, so while the Bears are in San Francisco, so I'll uh, definitely keep you guys posted through the internet with um, some photo whoring. Yeah, you better be talking <laughs> some <laughs> shit out there. <laughs> <laughs> you better be like I the promise. Niners are beating you guys badly tonight. <laughs> I promise. I Show promise. what a real bear is. Yeah, mm, Cali bear, baby. <laughs> exactly. I can promise you that. And um, that's about it for this week. So go ahead, Sage. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you, Cecilia. Um, actually. I want to give a bigger shout out to Dr. Tommy and Vanessa. If it wasn't for them, I would have never met you. And actually, they're our sponsors at the New Health Chiropractic Center. And uh, she is amazing. Everyone, go ahead and see her. You know, you know, you can keep your underwear on. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And um, she just she offers more than massa- just massage. I mean, she's a you know she's a fitness freak. Uh, she can give you advice on you know some you know, workout supplements and all that good stuff. So go ahead and hit her up. And Benny Mac, good to see you. Always great Always. to see you. With Carla, amazing mm-hmm. woman that drives you here, so don't complain on the ride back home. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and to the crew over here, again, thank you again for the candy. Um, That's from both of us. <laughs> then you're not getting any. <laughs> Thanks again, Mike Ill. Yeah, no and uh, since everyone's given out their uh, Instagram, mine is at LadySage97. Um, hit me up for if you want some posters. Nice, nice. <laughs> Benny. Well, hey, thank you all for having me. Boop, so boop, much fun. So chance. fun. Always a good time when I come down here. Um, 
you know, shout out to uh, my friend uh, Jeff Strom, who was blowing me up during the show that he's watching over at the Mountain View Winery. And uh, is he talking Santa shit? Fel- uh, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he told me I look pretty good on TV. I was like, all right. <laughs> um, uh, you know, Jay Duran Vineyards, a gentleman I make some wine with out in Brentwood. Um, yeah. all, the, all the crew at Il Davide that where I work. Um, we gotta make a field trip over there. Field do. trip. We have please been please saying do. that forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do we have a field trip wish list? <laughs> I know. It's a fun little town. There. You guys have a good time, and of course, the whole town of Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, shout out to the town. Mm. Um, P town. And I, and I think I may take my automated car to get a massage. <laughs> I, I think it's. I think it's happening. I think it's formulating. Look at this guy changing with the yeah. times. Yeah. I know. Right? I like it. Progression. You guys yeah. did that. This all Progression. happened right here. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> right here right here thank you all that's awesome cecilia um well thank you guys for letting me be on this show thank and you. um it what an amazing experience um i've never experienced anything like this before so i'm just i'm very in my shell <laughs> i don't even have cable so um <laughs> but yeah thank you so much this is a wonderful experience um and i hope that i get to work with all of you soon um and thank you to Tommy and Vanessa for sure for introducing me to um, Simon Sam and Lady Sage, um, and I'm just so thankful. Thank you. Well, do you ever really quick? Do you ever keep in touch with that uh, chick from Hawaii? I mean, she if she's the main. Um no, actually no. no we we it wasn't a thing where it it was kind of just a crossing paths kind of thing. But does she know that like you she helped change your life? I don't think so. I'm sure she does. <laughs> That'd be so cool if you guys reconnected and you really told her that. Cool. You know? It would be really cool. But uh, to be honest, I really don't even remember <laughs> a lot of it. Because by the time um, she was done, I was just out of it. Yeah. I was I, so that's how it was I a feel blur. Too. And that, yeah. was, the best, that yep. was the best feeling. Well, we have a special guest. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All the way from Hawaii. <laughs> All the way from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> That'd be the ultimate Sam That'd show. Be yeah. That'd be awesome. You'd be tearing up and be like a freak. So wonderful woman, if you were watching this. If it was um, slam in like some kind of like <laughs> wide <laughs> outfit or beetle. Outfit. She was the sweetest. Like, Nobody wants to see that. Slam, I did. Uh, I, I did um, on on the gift line. I did have a gift for you uh, for the studio tonight. I had a um, <laughs> as an angel Pagan bobblehead that I was going to bring in for the studio. I figured it was a nice symbol. Mm-hmm. He's the catalyst of everything that's been going good. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's on my coffee table uh, right now. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, the I will, uh, disappointment right now. I will take uh-huh. pictures of it. I will take yes. pictures of it and put it on Facebook, and you will get it somehow. I'll get it to you soon. Uh, Someday. It, it would have been awesome. I had this all planned out, and I just blew it. But anyway. It's okay. I'll send you some pictures. It'll be on Facebook. You guys it's a thought that counts. It is, in fact. It's yeah. a thought that counts. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, oh sorry to cut you off also. <laughs> I want to say congratulations to Slam and Sam for beating me this week on week one of our And he didn't uh, even fantasy. say anything about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. I, I'm, I'm surprised that you're so graciously handling your second place. Like, As always, I'm always second, but one day I will rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> second the best. There you go. There you go. All right, guys. I'll go ahead and close out the shouts and plugs. I'd like to thank my entire crew, Sage, Cindy, Mike Ill, Joe Time. Hello. And our special uh, special guest co-host Benny Mac, always a pleasure. Thanks, thanks. And I am disappointed you didn't bring that <laughs> gone bobblehead. I, I, I guess it. we're gonna have to really go on that field trip. We're right? gonna have to. <laughs> then it's gonna make its way here, and we're gonna like chase it around and shit, dude. <laughs> I want that bobblehead, man. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> I'd like to thank our special guest in the house, Cecilia French. As always, uh, thumbs up on all your good work and for your future endeavors. We wish you all the best. And like Joe Time mentioned, uh, you're going to be able to reach those goals of having a big company where it's just a one stop for all healing, (laughs) for all therapy work, and fitness. And fitness. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Your body is very important. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Don't abuse it, guys. Exactly. Don't ever abuse it. And our special (laughs) guest, a significant other of Benny Matt, Carla, in our studio audience. (laughs) And she gets the biggest round of applause. Can you believe that? (laughs) Out of everyone. It's amazing. It's amazing. (laughs) And for everyone that's in the chat room, thank you for all your interaction, as well as everyone that's watching anonymously. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to like our Facebook page over at TVEPN, The Slam Show, and also follow us on Twitter. All right, that does it for this episode of the program. 
uh, for myself and everyone here. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.